Sweet. Well, uh, yeah, welcome, everybody. We are yet again without our favorite crypto journo, uh, as he is now gallivanting in France, uh, having a good old time. Um, but today we have a returning special guest, Mr. Dark Forest Capital, uh, which is very good. Welcome, bro. Yep, thank you. Happy to be here again. Very good. And we also have a returning Brotato Capital member who's been gone for the last fucking feels like forever, uh, Crypto Swiss. Have you been, man? Yo, been really good, man. Been really good. It's good to be back with the Brotatoes and um, some of the regulars that we get to see in here. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I feel like probably the the best thing to probably start us off all talking is uh, some pretty big news of this week, uh, which was the uh, apparent ETF approval for, for ETH. Um, might start with you, Dark, since uh, you turned heavy ETH bull in the last couple of months. Uh, what are your thoughts around the, the ETF approval? Yeah, I figured this might be why uh, I was dragged up as the... <laughs> The old boomer with a big bag of ETH. Um, <laughs> against his will, might I add. Dark is here against his will. Um, he had better things to do, but I said, no, you have to come on. Yeah, so I'll do it for you, Swiss. Um, yeah, I think, well, first of all, 1L, I've got to pick you up on your, your wording there, like apparent yeah. ETF approval. Um, I think I think you'll find Polymarket resolved to yes. So. Oh, it did? Okay, all approved. right. Yeah. Right. It must be right. No, then. that was a whole that was a whole controversy uh, in and of itself. I think so. Mm. Um, yeah, like a couple of days. I think is the main thing for me was being able to say fuck you to Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren and all those pricks that made it really difficult to tell people that you worked in crypto. Um, so now. There's there's very little shame telling people that I own ETH or that I work in crypto now. So uh, yeah, that's removed a big weight from my from my chest. As an internet commodities trader, that is now regulated <laughs> by the CFTC. It's going straight on the LinkedIn. <laughs> it is so much better now that we can say that we're commodities traders uh, rather than crypto <laughs> traders. It's, it's <laughs> Not going to lie. So. As commodities traders, I guess you will have spotted the um, there was like a ten percent down candle, like when the <laughs> when there was no announcement at four pm. Did anybody get caught out by that? Because I know a few people that did. Uh, yeah, was... I was watching it live uh, when it happened. Um, so I think it was like six am our time, and like everyone was like. I think the night before we, we went to sleep and like a little telegram chat was like, yeah, six thirty in the morning, like that's when it's going to get announced. I was like, sweet. So I woke up like 5.45, I'm like, ah, oh, I still got like you know, 45 minutes left. And then like, when I went on Twitter or X or whatever it's fucking called, everyone's like, yeah, six o'clock, six o'clock. I'm like, what the fuck? Isn't it 6.30? And then some people are like, nah, it's 6.30. Some people are like, nah, it's six. And then six o'clock hits, the fucking down candle comes. Like, obviously all of the <laughs> algos that, that are like programmed to like trigger to see if there was any news at like six. Just like, nope, no news, sell. Um, and then it was just massive and it's like wicked down massively. And then it was a big, like down. liquidation wick. Like <laughs> it went to like 3,500 or something from like 3,900. Like it's pretty big, like <laughs> it move for like a, an asset that fucking, um, liquid. Yeah. So I know a, a friend of a friend got taken out for about 500 K on that. Um, Oof. Oh. <laughs> Oof. yeah because shows... they probably all thought it was a brain dead play like just wait for the approval exactly. at, at eight or whatever the time was and everyone just gets wrecked i don't know why you would... it's like if you oh, uh, event if trading is the you dumbest know, shit what you don't know it's like sorry go on i think event trading is just so fucking risky and stupid in my opinion especially if you're cranking up the leverage yeah because it was a sure thing right yeah it's up on one side, if it's a sure thing it's like guaranteed that's not <laughs> the whole timeline thinks it's a sure thing at that specific moment so where do we go from here one l is uh sort of hovering around are you waiting for it to bark back down or uh i don't know like <laughs> it's it it like the skeptic in me that's sort of saying like 
bullish news normally should have some sort of continuation. Um, and I feel like the original bullish news like was that pump that we had in, I think it was Tuesday last week, time, uh, where we went from like 3K to like 3,800, which, um, but I feel like that was such a lock at that point in time that the actual official announcement was probably not anything that more exciting. Um, and so like we're kind of in this like no man's land where like there's not this actual continuation of price action, but potentially maybe it's it's it. But uh, if it bats back down, I'll just fucking neck at this point because I'm I'm <laughs> bullish for continuation. To be, to be fair, but um, I, hang I on, are you it... long east? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what the laughs> on woo, <heck>? on woo. <laughs> yeah, lev, lev, lev long east. <laughs> <laughs> this is a revelation. What's, what's happened? I hate how one else says he's like so. He's been like he hates on ETH. You've literally got ETH exposure through like pudgies and shit. Like I hate yeah, you. Yeah. Like why? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, no, look. I, I think my my sort of feelings are justified because like ETH added so much to its market cap that day, but like every other coin got fucking slaughtered, right? Mm. On on the same day. And it just shows you there was like everyone that like was positioned in ETH. Eventually, a lot of people went offside of ETH, play around and everything else. And then when this ETH news came to be, when everyone thought it was going to be rejection, they they sold everything else, come back to push push ETH up. We you know we added quote unquote everyone fucking saying like Solana's market cap in in a single candle. Um, and then like that's all we could do. So we're like we're Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill, and then. You know, I'm just waiting for the bolt, the boulder to roll back down again. Fucking heaviest asset on earth, ETH. So, like, I'm bullish, but like, I'm also very. You see the tweet from. You see Arthur's tweet from Defiance. So he did a poll on. Hmm. Uh, with respect to ETH in your portfolio, uh, I can share it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. The winning percentage was not to twenty five percent. Um. With almost fifty percent of the the poll responses being that out of five thousand eight hundred responses, so yeah, I'm not sure everybody's back on just yet. They're probably waiting mm. to see what it does because true, like true. e things, typical e things is it, like everything just dumps. So yeah, wait and see. Yeah. But I don't think it's over yet. No, not at all. What are your thoughts? Uh, like obviously, you've been away for a while. Probably an interesting week to come back. Uh, he pro he didn't really miss much except for like Shop City and uh, Donald switching his profile picture upside down. Um, it, oh, is Donald bearish? Is that the? Yeah, I think it was bearish on like memes, which was yeah. pretty funny because then Pepe like ripped fifty percent after his tweet. But yeah, uh, the ETH one. Like, I'm I'm so glad that we had Sassel on to tell us in advance that there would be a democratic 180 pivot on the, <laughs> the ruling heading into the ETF decision. I felt like he had every right to keep that up his pocket and save it for later for clout purposes, but he was up front with us and said, yeah, look, this is going to happen. They're going to pivot because Donald Trump will um, endorse crypto, which forces the Democrats to support it and therefore adjust their decision on their initial ruling, whether or not it is a security or or what have you. So it was good to get that news. Um, but yeah, I guess the run up for ETH was similar to BTC um, with actually respect to what Sasa was saying. It's already had like a run up without the ETF. I think now that the news has come out, it will probably go down for a little bit similar to BTC or what it would do is not do that. And then just essentially keep going higher up, which would be a lot more bullish overall for markets, I think. Um, like go then, up or down, basically. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just trying to make sure I claim clout both ways, Dark. <laughs> right, okay. L listen, I told you you could come on the podcast without making me look bad, man. What are you doing? Um, I was just, nah, just like... making sure I had it, had it clear. <laughs> but um, yeah, up or down, really. But uh, you know what I mean? Like, it, if it would be natural for it to nuke after the approval um, or the launch date or whatever that looks like, similar to what BTC did. And if it didn't do that, that would be a lot more bullish because um, it shows overall market strength. Um, even though the ETFs weren't that popular for ETH and it's predicted that the volume wouldn't be as much either. 
Um, that, yeah, so that's my thoughts. That. So we'll say that. It is interesting that Pepe has now jumped up billions of market cap more so um, than anything else. Like it's made new hires and continued to go a lot higher off the back of nothing really. I could see. I didn't really see too much on Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool to witness. Mm, yeah, I think the Pepe move was um, obviously had a lot to do with the ETF. Um, but also before that, I think it was fueled by like the MAGA, like the Trump, um, just like bullish news. A lot of Pepe holders are just like make America great again, maxis. So um, mm. yeah, it's got a bit of both added to it and just like feel this like huge rally that's put it in the you know probably in a position to eventually flip shib as the uh number two meme coin yeah but, i didn't really anticipate that to be honest um, oh I, yeah i mean i i'm the same i i didn't think it would happen like while this everything else was sort of chopping like i i originally i thought all memes would just rise together not select memes would go but yeah it's interesting yeah yeah um hmm. what did you guys think about the uh ETH etf ruling um uh, yeah you go sorry no no like oh, oh i think like the biggest thing for me and I, and I don't think the thing that's been priced in as much yet is like the ETH ruling in itself isn't the important bit in terms of like what it means for ETH, it's what it means for like the rest of the space. Because with BTC, it was like, it was somewhat relatively accepted as like this commodity and like digital gold and, uh, and that sort of narrative. And it was always like there's BTC and there's everything else. Um, whereas now with the ruling on the ETH ETF, it's like, it, it's not, the fact that it's now getting an ETF and there's going to be spot flows into ETH, it's the fact that ETH is not deemed a security. Because that, to me, I think is the biggest news. Because what does that then mean for all of the other things that have been, you know, potentially securities or not that haven't officially been deemed so now that ETH is not security? Um, and I think that has a much longer term impact on as a whole um than what mm. the the btc etf had so i think that's really big um also the the you know, the the political side and that's something we can get into a little bit later just on on the whole pivot around the i guess the republican side sort of embracing crypto um side of things as part of their re-election i think that sort of speaks to the volume of where they think a lot of their Know, voters are going to be um and and so if if the government in the u.s is pivoted now like the the, the current government pivoted now on um the etf or on, on on crypto should i say um what does that then mean for the space i think that's the bigger news story rather than the fact that it is now going to be subject to the same sort of capital inflows that btc had i feel like that was very btc orientated i feel like just the the ruling in itself of ETH not being a security is definitely the biggest news and the most bullish outcome um, out of this whole week. Um, but I don't feel like that's been quite appreciated yet in the price action, which is interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 100%. I think also people are like thinking about it too hard. It's like Trump is endorsing crypto, not because he's like this fucking, he loves Bitcoin. It's more because all just for the election it's like the democrats hate crypto so he's like hmm i can just be the party that loves crypto yeah <laughs> and then it'll work in my favor and then they realized uh, how big of a reaction it got and then obviously i've pivoted but you know what's funny the i saw base 16 j's tweet about was it frank d god that was the one who actually asked him the question in the first place nah it wasn't him was it no, because that's like, what I just thought. some kid with some kid with the uh, glasses, the goggles, as Trump called them. Some, yeah, the mo the, uh, mog, the mog glasses. The, the yeah, glasses. I think it might have been because because I saw a base sixteen J tweet and it said like Frank D. God could have literally 
made the ETH ETF possible by like asking the question. I don't know if it was him, like, but that was like the tweet that it I saw. Been, it could have like, been. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, it's so funny. Imagine like <laughs> him. He's the reason. <laughs> the ETH ETF. But uh, nah, yeah, yeah. it's it's good. It's pretty funny seeing like political big uh you know sides of politics fighting over this due to you know they want because they want to win elections and it's like the voters we've, yeah. yeah we've gotten that big to a point where it actually kind of matters um yeah that's nah, cool yeah, yeah just to sort of reiterate on that actually because i think you've both said that it's a, a big point and i agree um you imagine like if if you've been here since 2020 all you've known is like China bans Bitcoin, China bans crypto. <laughs> the US fights <laughs> yep, Bitcoin, they hate it. fights crypto. Mm. And like, in the last week, we've literally got, oh, we're an asset class. Like we're accepted. <laughs> in the last, yeah. Like financial country, like the most important country financially on the planet. Yeah. And it's like, actually you know massive. What? They're like, you know what? Apart from it being an asset class, free Ross, we've been brought up on the law as well. Yeah, we, we, want, we want him out. And everyone's like, what? Because like, what? like consensus has a has a counter suit against the SEC because the SEC, as, as I guess, still have that open suit to say that ETH is a security. So like, what happens with that? Yeah, out if the window. And, surely. So we can like just relish in the salt now because they re, like they haven't they didn't. They paraded around the Bitcoin uh, approval, right? Because obviously, mm. you know, they wanted to say, right, we're in control. Like we've given this the green light. Gary sticks his neck out and says, here's a here's some commentary and here's how we voted. This time around, they got the call saying, just fucking do it. And so they've refused to comment. We don't know who voted for what. Um, mm. And they haven't even said that ETH... SEC still hasn't put their stance forward. Yeah cried about it in the dark and let everybody figure it out for themselves so i think we should take a minute to relish in that as well because it's like they've, they've fought us they fought the space for years and years and years and mm. they just got kicked in the face by somebody with bigger boots and now like it, it's all just completely turned around yeah bigger boots on their side as well like it came came top down um yeah 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 i think the the turning point was the that article or something like when trump started taking donations in crypto. Mm. Um, I think that was like the, the trigger point um, from, from memory um, because like that sort of showed, I think, I think there was a tweet that someone posted that showed a text message conversation that was someone in the Democrat team saying like, Trump's able to raise all of this capital now from all of these crypto. Um, they're going to outraise us by like 80 million um, simply because of this, like, you can't fade this. <laughs> yeah. I also think that... Um, now, I don't know too much about the the Ross details and if there are people that have been working on it ever since he's gone into prison to try and get him out or his sentence uh, adjusted. But um, I think f for whoever has been able to speak to the Trump administration um, or the the parties uh, or the Trump party to be able to get him up to speed on the Ross situation for him to come out in a speech and say that they'll do something about his sentence. I think that's a huge win for um, people that are crypto adjacent or crypto friendly that believe in his freedom and his um, involvement within Silk Road to, to get that reduced. So if there are people working um, close with Trump or have tried hard to work that in favor of ross i think that's a really great outcome as well whether or not he gets voted in and actually reduces the sentence could be another thing but i think the fact that he has come out in a speech and said that he'll get the sentence um he'll fix it i'm not sure what it actually means yeah, he's, commuted, he's doing. so so commuted means like yeah. basically he, they'll cut the sentence for him basically wow well, yeah i think that's a great win for whoever's trying who has I don't know if it's a party or if it's a person, whoever's gone into the trouble to try and get that in front of Trump mm. to get that to working in Ross's favor. I think that's a huge win. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was definitely preempted, right? Because like when he did the announcement today, there was like tweets um, prior to it saying Trump is going to announce love of Ross's, you know, um, sentence. Oh, really? 
Yeah, and then when he announced it, if you watch the video, um, there's a whole bunch of signs saying free Ross um, that are like oh. facing towards the camera. So it was like definitely very well preempted. And it's like, of like he could have named a bunch of people that he wanted to, to, to do anything with their sentences with, but he specifically came after Ross, right? So it's like this, whoever's in his team that's like driving this at the moment knows what they're fucking doing. They're on Twitter somewhere. They're just not announcing who <laughs> they are, but like they know what they're fucking doing. Um, yeah, and then, I, I wonder if it was Ryan Selkis because I see him mm, with true. like political takes now, and um, yeah, I, did, I think he was he shaking hands with Donald Trump at one point. I don't really know, but potentially maybe it he was, went on stage with him. He went on stage. Yeah, maybe it was um, Mar a Lago. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, maybe yeah. it's Mazzari. That's what they're doing now. Rather than putting out analyst reports, they're just um, you know mm. lobbying Trump. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've just pulled up. Uh, probably share it with you, but um, yeah, there was uh, on Ryan Selkis's page. If you pull that up, you can see this video, like the whole crowd showing the free Ross stuff. Um, up it to the camera. So, yeah, I definitely feel like he. You, you're probably right. It's probably him. Through that, set it all up. Right to it. Yeah, um, I, I just think it's a huge effort. Like, this is the next potential president. So if he gets the vote in, um, that would be just huge, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think yeah, the, the, I like the other it. thing was... Yeah, sorry, um, you go. Trump, like, he, he said something to the effect of, like, um, are you going to be happy with 3% every four years? Like, something like that. And I was like, bro's definitely on Twitter. <laughs> like... Like, he's, like, memeing on people for, like, investing in, like, shitty stuff. And he's, like, you... Because they were, like, booing. There's some people booing. And he's, like, all right, all of these booers, they're, they're happy with 3% every four years. And I was, like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Do you, do you know what? I actually think that um, his comments about CBDCs were good. Mm. I just don't actually think people quite understand what they are enough for people to be, like, oh, that's, like, a huge win. Because him coming out... Like, if he, like here's the th here's the really cool thing. If he comes out and he's like, no, we're not making central bank digital currencies, Australia is not likely to continue their path in creating one either. I can't imagine, like he could set a precedence around the world in mm, terms of mm. not allowing that to be created. Um, but like, I think if people knew more about the, I'm not saying they're like inherently evil, but like if they had, if they were more, if people were more understanding of what the potential downside and um, loss of privacy and loss of freedom to transact, etc., 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 for um, uh, CBDCs, I think that would win a lot more votes just by itself um, on that stance. Mm. Six, no, I agree. Your what on the on the Trump? Trump. Like, Heath. I cut you off. I think also. you know what? I think he's a pretty smart dude in the sense that obviously before I said he's only doing this because, you know, the Democrats are anti crypto party, you know, with Elizabeth Warren and all that. But also, don't forget, he actually has maybe he hasn't used it himself, but he has played around with crypto. You've seen yeah. it with his, you know, his Trump NFT line. I've seen his doxed wallets. There's a lot of ETH in there. You know, he had like, I think he had like a million dollars <laughs> of ETH or something. So it's it's funny seeing him endorse it because, you know, he's in the past he's been like, look, I actually made money from doing virtually nothing. I just, you know, I got a million dollars for virtually doing nothing um, just for fun. It's it's like private, you know. Um, and to top it off, the Democrats fucking hate it. So <laughs> it's just like a win-win situation for trump um Nothing he likes more compelling it. than uh, elizabeth warren hating on it so yeah, yeah making money from it and elizabeth warren hating he can't, and he can't not like it but um nah it's 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 good to see because um you know it was getting a bit worrying at times with that whole dystopian you know you'll control nothing they'll you know, the government will control everything. And, like, I don't know what's going to fucking happen in 20 years from now, but, you know, the shift is happening, I feel like. Um, I think people are getting a bit fed up with everything. So, yeah, hopefully 
bullish. I think it's like so bullish, like what's happening right now, yeah. going into the end of the year. Um, I think it will, you know, this will just be another catalyst to send us so much higher. Him and Larry just pumping our bags. So yeah, good <laughs> shit. Yeah. So Big Doc, why up. aren't our bags pumping then? <laughs> Because it's ETH. When ETH leads the market, everything else suffers, right? So <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I like the fact that uh, Solana used all of this like heavy news flow to uh, launch the Housewives of Solana um, TV series. <laughs> And oh, some stepped good... forward and, and created and some angels all in the same week as we got all of this uh, political stuff happening. So perfect just, time just to, to really highlight the, the like the dichotomy of crypto. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with the uh, housewives of Solana? <laughs> I've just put up the. I just seen the the video for it. Like. I um I went on <laughs> I clicked on one of them and there was like this chick I don't know if I think it might be the Housewives of Solana I don't know but it was it was also that OnlyFans of that version oh, the of Solana only one? yeah 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 only one and it's just funny to see it says like twenty four soul you like get a date or something and they yeah, it's like two hundred and fifty like, soul dude it's pretty expensive. really yeah 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 it's oh, like forty eight like grand yeah <laughs> just pull it oh up, god. So. So when you go into only one at the moment, there's like the tab Ansem's Angel, and then hang um, on, can can someone send me the link to this so I can do this in oh, real okay. time? I have not checked this out yet. Yeah, only one dot app. Um, so there's two girls that are Ansem's Angels. One called Jaylene, and I can't remember the other ones, but they've got these packages, and it's like the two soul package, the point six nine, the point two soul, which are just like regular OnlyFans type stuff, and then there's this yeah. 250 soul all past benefits from the previous packages plus one-to-one -one video calls with her plus she'll fly you out or she'll or she'll fly to you book a five-star hotel take you on a date and then you'll get bragging rights with a playboy playmate um uh, there's another oh there's three now all for the there's reasonable price of forty-eight thousand dollars dollars <laughs> <laughs> and this one offers a personalized gift box with her used lingerie and How your name oh slash God. meme coin anyone oh, on anywhere on her body 380 soul oh. all of that crazy but like like if you is if she you, hot i can't even see <laughs> no nah, not like they're pretty mid um uh, damn but um like if you break down the costs right so you've got the five-star hotel, you've got the flights. You're assuming maybe 24 hours, maybe 48 hours with this person. Average uh, person's maybe worth $1,000 an hour. It's probably not too, too out there. Yeah, considering how much would an escort cost here? Probably like 1000 bucks an hour if you brought yeah, them to your hotel. Yeah. For, for, I a, mean, for an average one, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like if you want a cheap one, it's like 400 I think, you know? yeah, I think it's the whole... <laughs> Pretty funny. Just the not whole that process. I know, not that I know, not that I know. There was a lot of authority going on there. One there was a lot. I love, the I love the confidence of you just saying, yeah, thousand dollars an hour, like easily. <laughs> yeah. Probably more high end's probably more like three, four grand, but anyway. yeah. Angelina's on here. The yeah, uh, yeah. chick that Foo simped for. Yeah, yeah. What? She's on here. Yeah. Yeah, Harvey Foo sim for a chick. What the fuck? Yeah, Angelina. No, no, no. It ended up being the dude, but it, it, she's a real person, I think. Oh, yeah, sure. No, there okay. was an account that she ran. No, that she that there was an account that was running that a dude was running the social media for it, but it was using her pictures and that. Anyways, like she quit that company, and then everyone was like, "Oh, Foo simped for a man" because it was run by a social media manager. <laughs> and then she went and started her own account, like without being signed to a company afterwards, and she's joined only one. What's her, um, does she have, like, what's her Twitter? Angelina. Angelina. Again, sorry. <laughs> I see you in Zurich, um, and pretty rich on the TL, bro. I see you. <laughs> Don't be hiding shit. So, it, what, is the value proposition of this that it's built on Solana? Um, I think so. <laughs> I think it's like a combination of like OF plus 
like crypto crypto yeah basically yeah um, because a lot of the of platforms and that what they're getting like banned from payouts on like paypal and that so um uh, because okay. a lot of the um payment platforms are not allowing you know associations to things like of and Pornhub or whatever platform so this gives you like a a way to be able to collect all of the money that you make without having to go through a third party and get rugged of all your money so like that's the value prop really and if you're handsome the value prop is that you get to be chief pimp of this new network <laughs> <laughs> this honestly is so weird like I really hope they don't email me and ask for a raise on this. Like, you know, just <laughs> wouldn't want to jump in on it. No, I'm kidding. But it is. <laughs> I actually shared that... it on the podcast like two, three episodes ago, like before it was popular. When someone asked, "Wait, what did you show?" This the only one platform. <laughs> only one. Yeah, oh, I think I remember. That's <laughs> yeah. you were the one who spoke about it, and I was like, "Wait, it's no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a token. Only fans yeah, yeah. On it's got a Someone's token. already purchased the date night though. It says one of one left, so it means that someone's already bought this. This no, is no, the funniest part. One of one like, left means so that many they rich motherfuckers. It. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. But if you look at the other ones, if that's like anything to go off, because if you look underneath, it says girlfriend, and it says two hundred and forty-two out of two hundred and fifty yeah. left. If it would, so it would show zero of one left if it was purchased. But why is there uh, so yeah. what? So eight soul has been purchased. Like I'm confused. I'm with you, but this yeah, it, it's done it like backwards. So it's yeah. saying 242 out of 250 are left. Oh. Uh, so this isn't actually as busy as what I thought it would be. No, go. no. I thought no, this no one... had a lot of people on it. <laughs> the, the problem Damn, is, is like, you're going to get doxxed as fucked. <laughs> like, if someone buys this, <laughs> like, your wallet address is tainted forever. Like, unless you come from, like, a centralized exchange. But even if you do, get like, how are you going to explain one. that to the tax man? <laughs> I think what we should do is create a handle. Uh, does this link to your Twitter or what? Uh, no, just to your wallet, I think. Okay, cool. Let's all make an account called Dark Forest Cap um, and get an Azuki profile. And what we'll do is we'll jump on there and we'll just do a bit of experimenting, see if we can get some points for the airdrop coming up. I, I, I honestly think someone is going to do... I might actually message Videmo and just tell him, bro, like, just buy one of the cheap ones and put an E in it. Like, put your... Um, address as like a fucking influencer name. <laughs> it would be so funny. Do we think this is a top signal though? Uh, only fans on chain at the center of it is Ansem in his um, main character arc. Um, it is for Sol. No one's bought it yet, sir. <laughs> Dark, I'm coming for you. <laughs> it is for Sol. Don't say that, Dark. I have Sol meme coins, remember? <laughs> Even yeah. though I love it, I've, I love got, I've got soul bags too, but I just fucking can't stand the thing. <laughs> yeah, because you were pretty bu bullish on um, soul, uh, Dark. Does that mean you might essentially, uh, ch if you change your bias a little bit on that, or do you still think that as long as ETH goes up, soul should go up respectively more against it? Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, that. I am not so bullish on it here. I think a lot of people on actually the opposite of that. Hardly anybody talks about the level of inflation on it. Um, mm. And so while there's calls for like $700 or a thousand dollars, like I think that's pretty insane uh, given the, the, inflation the supply that we have these days. Mm. And, and yeah, I think last time I looked the other week, it was like $12 million of inflation. So to be fair to the chain, like it's um, some of the block, Blockworks guys did a, a piece of research and created that data that said that um, total economic value was going to flip Ethereum in terms of like the MEV and the um, yeah uh, like fees, and it has like drastically improved there. But at the same time, with the price going up, then the inflation on the other side of that equation mm. has also gone yeah. up. So it's all well and good having like three mil of total economic value or whatever you want to call it but when that's balanced off against 12 million dollars a day of inflation then it still doesn't really cut the mustard so yeah i think it could be a lot heavier from here like it's repriced to to be in line with everything else now um i wouldn't expect a, a parabolic run to the same level that we had last cycle yeah okay Interesting. that's fair 
D didn't um, Sorry, Soul, Fees, and Mev sort of flip or close to flip ETH like a week ago? Before the yeah, ETH pump? Yeah, that's the bit I was referencing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I love the um, all ETH G2. chart. You can pay it, them. So. Where <laughs> did the it, Soul ETH chart was like literally about to break out and then Gary like stopped it. Yeah, I saw a tweet from Glug today saying that like um, Ansem was a plant from Larry Fink to get everyone to purchase into everything else but ETH. And, um, and Glug, <laughs> he's such an ETH maxi. <laughs> And then now that uh, now that it's it's out, um, okay. uh, you be allocating to. I'll just pull up the tweet. It's pretty funny. Um, but you you got real world assets on Soul now with these um, OnlyFans things. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Narrative. Better than Ondo. Better than Ondo. Yeah. Ondo. Ondo. Dude. I need a condo. <laughs> Oh, dude, if I bought Ondo, fuck me, at 20 cents, which I should have. I should have sold all my tier and just went all in and Ondo at 20 cents. I would have had a condo by now, but that's okay. Yeah, here's the tweet. So it's like, Ansem was likely an industry plant from BlackRock to get you to believe in Solana to, in order for retail to believe Ethereum was useless so they could scoop cheap Ethereums on the road to 100k per Ethereum on a long enough time horizon. Think about it. Why do you think pe Pepe pumping and Whiff isn't? BlackRock is eating the book and is now trying to bring retail to Ethereum by sending Pepe to one trillion market cap. Franklin Templeton's shilling whiff was the decoy. You have been played. You have lost your faith in Ethereum, and now you will lose your faith in yourself. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I love that Larry Fink photo. It's so fucking it's so funny. good. I love it. That and the GCR, like, bird one. Oh, dude. Like, the funny thing so is, is he probably sees this on Twitter as well, or like he has people that see this and just think it's hilarious. Um, yeah. I love it. No, it's good... funny as soon as soon as the uh, ETH ETF, like those um, Bloomberg dudes tweeted, like Big Dick Bull just posted that photo of Larry and just wrote like <laughs> "fuck you" or something. <laughs> I was just like, this is hilarious. It's a good point on this uh, on inflation, though. But there's like. Uh, I think the last of the uh, the FTX tokens got sold this week um, to Pantera and, and a bunch of others. Um, mm -hmm. nice. And I think the price that they got sold at was around like uh, $100? Yeah. So oh, the, nice. yeah, the first tranche was like 64 the second was 105 I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be a bit careful with that though, because it's like you've gone from that that inflation schedule or that unlock schedule. Sorry, is mm. has gone from somebody who would have sold like the FTX estate would have sold them at whatever price via mm. Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Now Galaxy has sold them to themselves, and they're also up like three x on the sixty four dollar buy. Um, so I don't think it completely gets rid of that sell pressure. It just changes it. To Mike Novogratz's back pocket rather than uh, like some dodgy lawyer. Novogratz's back pocket. Yeah. yeah. I'm. This might sound crazy, but because you know, you always want drama between these two chains, but I just like both of them. Get the fuck out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> crazy. You allowed. can't. It's not, you gotta pick sides in this fucking. pick sides, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah. As... ETH Eco hasn't been doing too bad, I guess. Like, look at... um, Hang on here. Oh, okay. there's heaps of money on ETH, bro. Just, like, dudes who made money originally on ETH. It's like BTC Maxis. Like, dudes who made money on ETH, they want to stay on ETH. Obviously, there's people that have moved to Seoul because they like making money, and they've, you know, moved on. Or they do both still, but moved to Seoul while it was killing it in the last like six months but there's dude there's heaps of people on eth that have made like millions mm. and they just store their you know wealth on eth like heaps um but yeah both chains have you know got a lot of money stored on them now so one of the best coins that's performed well recently has been a coin that i've held for forever and it's like was dust oh, I know which coin. <laughs> and um the, in in the little Oz Telegram chat the other day, there was like a fucking obituary going out from like everyone shitting on Lido. And I was like, man, this is probably a really good time to buy it. Um, 
and um yeah it's gone up like 68 percent from that day <laughs> and it, it's like finally like i think how long ago was that that was like only a few days ago that it was like a dollar fifty yeah literally it was 11 days ago no 10 days ago it was a dollar fifty now it's like two dollars seventy mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, it's what about all the, the um, former, I think, from an ETH beta perspective? What about all the uh, ETH OG on chain memes that have caught fire recently? Like, I know, I remember I bought, when was it? In like October last year, I bought Joe Coin and there was a few other ones like SPX 690. Yeah, all those yeah. like hilarious memes and they're Joe. back at like all time. Like, Joe hit like Joe's 30 mil the other day. Yeah, like it literally did the full, went to one mil, then back to 27 mil. Like, I was I'm, like, I'm oh. literally back in profit now. Like yeah, on, it's, on it's ETH, I think, I don't know if I'm back on an ETH basis, but no, I'm not back on an ETH basis, but I'm uh, yeah, back on I mean, USD basis. I mean, I'd be back on an ETH basis, but yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. good. It's really interesting too. Like, is it just like the fact that there's like no like there's such low volume that all it takes is just a shift in yeah. higher behavior to just send these higher basically but you, you can't basically, really yeah. say that for lido because i think lido i don't know how really this actually works but perhaps you guys unlocked, can educate me yeah it's like continued to be unlocked and went from like a two mil market cap to a two billion market cap but i think it's oh, fully yeah, unlocked it's, now. it's finished now yeah so yeah it's all the, done the timing the timing on lido was impeccable because yeah um, it literally finished it, the other week I think. yeah it literally finished the other week um like it's, it's got one more unlock left which is from the original team and it's like 10 yeah. percent of the supply um but all of the other unlocks happened in uh like and they finished off just recently um yeah and basically um like that's happened all of this news has come out it bottomed out at like a dollar fifty it it's done as well if not better than pepe um and see the news that came out the other day yeah pepe's was interesting though because it actually had larger volume than doge it actually at one point soul. Had, it flipped soul. Soul. it's yeah i think i saw it on coin gecko i was like hmm, that's probably Bro, it's flipped so heaps of times in the last like few days in volume. Yeah. Um, and but, the yeah. fact that Pepe pumped without the ETH ETF, like it pumped like forty percent or something before any of this ETH news. ETH was like cucked at like twenty nine hundred, yet Pepe was still ripping like before that, um, which is kind of yeah, Larry, Larry Fink ba baiting the uh, the real tail to come back to ETH. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, so just continue. I, I, I no, no, that's okay. I just checked Lido, and yeah, it it it's like similar to its FDV now. That's not too bad, I guess. If you, well, I don't know. Maybe this is the maybe Coinbase, Lido, and ETH were all you needed in the uh, the grand scheme of the trades, um, according to Dgen Spartan. It'd be funny if he's right. Like for the next like six months or something, I would laugh so hard. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so... Six, can I ask you a, a question? Because um, you you seem to be pretty good at like picking stuff like Tia and Ondo. Uh, although you didn't uh, I didn't really pick Ondo, Ondo, unfortunately, but, um, but you, you sort of yeah, I Tia I, I, stage got... in the market. Sorry, go on. Sorry, continue what you were saying. It just cut off for a sec. Oh, yeah, sorry. The the question was just like I think we're at the stage in the market where. You need to be looking for that next Sol Loon Vex type trade. So you have a bit of history of like picking these things. Do you? Is there anything that, that you're looking at that you think that could perform like Sol Loon Avax or like a Rune did like last cycle, where it's probably already quite high FDV, but it's still it's like something out there is just going to run like crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just um, if you. It's it's it. difficult because. The problem with these high FTV coins is they rely on like a very strong, long lasting narrative to stay relevant. Like, so with Tia, it was really good. Like, it was a really good coin, first of all, because it was an, it was an airdrop that everyone sold as soon as they got it. And there was no airdrop meta back then. Um, so, like, it obviously pumped because the consensus was just dump it because it's like free money. So that pumped. And then the narrative of it was 
um like there was two narratives of like modular money but that wasn't really that good of a narrative it was more the the, the airdrops that you're getting and then that that like sort of um the catalyst that was dime that when people saw that literally you could stake one tr to get like 200 dime and the price of dime was like six seven dollars people just like couldn't believe it and so like that narrative was just like th there wasn't even any like tech background around it, it was just like buy t i don't even think about the usd value and stake it and get airdrops and that narrative lasted until like it didn't basically because everyone sort of were doing that and it became super consensus um so and then also the you know the ondo one which was really good because it was you know black rock real world narrative blah, blah blah but now that you know that that's actually still going on whereas the tier one we haven't actually gotten an airdrop so it's like that has sort of died if we got another airdrop um of like you know a substantial amount of usd i would presume tier would literally pump really hard again because the narrative is still alive so the trick is it's so hard because like you had the ai coins as well that did really well for like two months or something but now their narrative sort of drizzled out because altman's not in the news anymore and like obviously it's quite weird because nvidia's earnings are still good but they're not pumping so maybe the narrative wasn't as strong as i originally thought it was so it's so hard because you need one that is a long lasting narrative and the one that seems to be the has the best longevity now is the real world asset one which i actually faded um i thought that was not going to be that good of a i sort of mid curve that actually really hard um so my my unfortunately i've got nothing that i'm actually actively looking at right now but I think the trick is to just try and find a narrative that could potentially last longer than like a month or two. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, very difficult to do uh, to find like the coin that will continuously outperform for like months uh, rather than just like one or two months. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was trying to break down like what, what the key ingredients are for that to happen and what were the similarities over the coins that did it last time? Cause you had like communities that had been built up over a little while, maybe had been beaten down or told that their project was shit or stupid or didn't make sense. And then you had like a yield thing involved. So I'm thinking here of like, um, for example, Rune and Luna uh, mm. specifically. Um, uh, and so I'm looking for stuff like this time around that has a community that's been given a, a load of shit. Like people would hate it if it rallied. And coming up with things like Blast, like, if I say to you, Blast is going to go to some ridiculous valuation, you'd all, I'd, I'd imagine, think that that was stupid. So it's like, it's trying to find those ones that everybody's shitting on, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And that, well, Blast, really Blast is interesting because they're doing the um, the fantasy. And I know a few dudes that I've been speaking to. One guy uh, who's been like, use, he's I think he's like second or third in the leaderboard or something. And he's just like literally farming the shit out of it. Like, praying that he gets like a crazy airdrop from blast or something uh, because i think the fantasy is built on that um like odd and blast so um yeah I, as i said he's like the only one that i have been talking to that's actively like on blast like deploying capital on it so I mean, there's other people, obviously, but I just don't know many that are. But um, yeah, yeah, no, Blast could be one, hundred uh, percent. Like the idea of Frentech being a, a hated rally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking to, to you about that, Dark, I was like, uh, I kind of don't have any base exposure, and I kind of like base, uh, not base, I uh, like Frentech's valuation at only like a hundred mil, um, and I was like, yeah, maybe that's worth a. Worth well, a bit of a punt. If it pumps, that'll be a hated rally because I sold my airdrop at like oh, $2. Oh, did you? At like $2.30 or something? $2.40? I think something like that. Yeah, okay. so I dumped that. But yeah, I could definitely see it pumping. Racer gave me a free key the other day because um, I tweeted on one of his tweets and like worth like $800 when he first gave it to me. Like oh, shit, that's cool. Fucking earth. I didn't sell it. I should have, but I, I figured it's racer, so I feel like he would have. He, he's going to do something in the future where he'll reward those people that didn't sell it. 
Mm, yeah, he does that a lot. Yeah, but I, no, I would agree with tell the VCs Declan. to fuck off, though. That's what I think is like cool. one of the coolest things about it is that mm. even though I mean it's probably overshadowed by the falling out with um, pancakes, which I don't know the full story of, but he did tell a lot of the VCs at the start to f off. So if it were to rally, you could see the threat was coming out criticizing Frentex value proposition and how it won't fit in and how it won't be like Twitter and how it won't be this, won't be that, and you can <laughs> sort of see it be a disbelief sort of um value yeah. accrual over time um maybe i'm just like coping for it to go up in my favor but um yeah i think like the other thing too is i don't know how to value friend tech either i don't even know if it's going to be like something that works so i kind of like the idea of betting on it as um just where it's at in terms of market cap and um yeah the fact that i got an airdrop yeah. maybe makes Dude, me more inclined that- just to hold it that's the most bullish thing about it is when people don't know how to value things. I think mm-hmm. that's partly what happened with TM. Hundred percent. It's like mm. it's it's making like four hundred and thirty three dollars a year in annualized <laughs> revenue. <laughs> so nobody how ha- like nobody has any way to like anchor it or value it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think social could be could be that that sector because it's brand um, new for this time around, right? Yeah. Exactly. I saw yeah. a, f- a funny as tweet a base sixteen J tweet and it was like. Congratulations to the TSC investors from turning, um, I think it was like eighteen million dollars into two point two billion. <laughs> it was yeah, so funny. Just, like oh the valuation is just like no one like knows how to value it. So like it literally it's limitless. Whereas like there's actual metrics for certain coins that you can actually like coins like Arb and shit like that where they do like actual numbers and it's like well you can actually value this at a certain level in a sense so there's a cap on it and that's sort of the reason memes pump as well it's like there's yeah. no actual there's no actual reason for them not to go up as if they have enough demand but it's interesting yeah well that's my idea of getting some base exposure because i start to i mean it's not really my thesis because i watched um while on holiday i downloaded the the Taiki and um, Crypto Messi um, podcast um, yes. yep. and listen to that a bit. Um, and I really like the way that um, I like Messi as a person um, in terms of the way that he answers questions and he's kind of blunt and a little bit honest, but he's like, he thinks base will have a little bit of a run um, given it's positioned under Coinbase and they'll have their wallet integration. And I, I tend to believe that um, a little bit as well. I just don't know how to, I don't really know what to buy on base. I'm not that big on memes. If I had to take a position on like the base upside, even you though didn't want to buy form, Normie. But... <laughs> I didn't even know what that was. It looked like the Sproto guy, and I was like, did, oh. "Can someone explain that to me? Like, did all the holders lose their money?" Yeah, basically. That's so fucked. Oh my so, god. So I've just pulled up the chart. So there was an exploit today, and so Normie like, if you were a top base. wallet that had like yeah, you, 300, 400k, it's zero now. Yeah, so there was a there was something in the contract basically that uh, I think I've got the tweet here. Oh my tweet god, here. I'd kill myself. Um, yeah, so the normie contract had a pre market user cap that bypasses checks in the swap and liquefy function, and that could be used to mint tokens. Unfortunately, like the way the code was written, it only checks if the wallet is a valid pre market user by checking if the user's token balance is the same as the team wallet. Um, so someone figured this out and then basically just minted a shit ton of tokens um, oh and then God. rugged like all of the liquidity on it, essentially. So now it's got an FTV of like 10K, like 36K liquidity. Fucked. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't exactly doing well before that exploit, but... Uh, no, <laughs> it definitely well, what accelerated. Was it what, what was it at? Uh, the chart looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, it was like 40 million, I think. Oh, okay. So it was like yeah. not even that big, but yeah, still crazy. Like some dude probably had like, a, like obviously wouldn't have been able to sell it, but like would have had like on paper five hundred k position or something like that. Did they yeah, actually? You guys have seen the seen the demands from the hacker, right? Uh, Ooh, yeah. What, no. what are they? <laughs> uh, the, I love the, these. The, the like the normie dev has to get on the scales to show what he His weighs. <laughs> are you serious oh, that's so fucking funny yep. what the fuck this, this this is not a serious industry we are not a serious <laughs> industry 
This is not a serious industry. That's why we're putting commodity traders in our buyers. <laughs> yeah. So oh, sticks. You this. know how he said he probably had 500k. And now he's uh, down 500k. Yeah. So I just pulled up this tweet from Jelly Smith Rave. There was a guy that like <laughs> he tweeted like earlier in the day saying, "You didn't give me a soul, Addy. So you're not going to get your jigger." Uh, for his like NFT thing, yeah. And then the same dude, he's like quote tweeted him because like the guy had all of his like he had 500k in Normie, and no then now, way. He's, now he's down 500k. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I'd end it all. <laughs> I'd end it all. Uh, oh, geez. that's fucked. Oh, boys, I have a question for you. Um, you guys can all separately answer this if you want. Um, thoughts this cycle on what nfts and ordinals are going to do because they're both in a weird space like nfts are sort of not moving up because eth is like r ripping so they're either selling off i mean miladies are because like pepe but aside from that they're sort of just not really doing much and holding and ordinals have descended because you know like beach season the main narrative at the moment so what do you guys reckon on on those Swiss, you're the, the tame <laughs> NFT guy, right? Yeah, I'm the one that doesn't perform well, so I'll give you a, a, a good coping answer. Um, I think that it won't take much money to move these, and once it does, people, uh, once things start moving, I think that'll extrapolate a little bit more. Um, it seems that the top collections of last cycle are kind of still relevant in terms of volume traded, so... I'm just literally looking at OpenSea right now. I probably should look at Blur, but I'm a boomer and use OpenSea. But um, yeah, like I think they'll they'll go up because it doesn't take much to change the floor. Like if you just um if I just like click on little pudgies right now, the floor is at like zero point eight six, and there's only like like maybe twelve buys yeah. until it's about an ETH yeah, or yeah. something. So like it really won't take much to to move these up and get price extrapolations that are similar to like meme coins um and i think that that'll come maybe considering this is the current trend it'll probably come a little bit later after prices go up a lot so like maybe this isn't something that will go off until months after we've had like a a melt up or something like that um but yeah i i feel like we had a little bit of an NFT run late last year, maybe early this year. Um, yeah. Pudgies did really well. Um, they've still held up okay. Like they went from what, I don't know, one or you might be able to chime in, but they went from like single digit ETHs to 20 ETH and now they're back at like. Yeah, I think they've they declined like ten, half. 10. So 8. they've cut in half. Yeah. 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 So I think that'll come back uh, because it just doesn't take much to move them. It doesn't matter if it's no. like a high cost um, basis. It, and I think if you were wanting to position for upside it's probably not the worst to do it while there's all this ambiguity and uncertainty um even though we still like we've currently come from the perspective that things have already gone up in nfts i don't think that i, and I think you should kind of just like set and forget um that things even went up in nfts and just start looking for things that will go up again um mm -hmm. in in the future uh so yeah i'm pretty bullish but like bullish on the fact that it won't take much to send things higher and that um trend to snowball but i wouldn't necessarily take like a massive position in anything and then just say oh yeah i'm waiting for that to to go up because you might be missing out on clear winners in the meantime and you're not sure when that um extrapolation of price will come in so that's my thoughts on it nice nice yeah just to add some Anyone context else? to that i would say like so pudgy penguins as like swiss mentioned before so little pudgies if you look at their market cap like, and if you just take the lowest floor price um, times by um, the number of items in the collection, it's like 71 mil market cap. Um, the mains, the, like the bigs, they're 330 mil market cap. Um, if you just took, like, like I said, lowest floor price by number of items in the collection. So if you're trying to compare it to a meme coin, um, then, you know, relatively, it's, it's quite different. Um, but then obviously floor price is set by how many are sitting on the floor. So like Swiss said, it doesn't take much to, to sort of move that price quite quickly. Um, but if you look at last cycle, I think 
um, for, like my recollection from last cycle was that like, NFTs had a little run prior to the May dump um, in 2021. Um, but NFTs really weren't that established yet. And the, the vertical of like uh, PFP NFT, N- NFTs, apart from punks, only really took off after the May dump, which was around June 2021. Um, and and they had their run from like, I would say June, July, or oh, probably July, August, uh, September, October was their run, which was like the last few months before the, the peak O top. Um, and then post that there was like the constant, like mint cycle of all the, the new NFTs being created similar to what we're seeing mm. with meme coins now. So, um, uh, like most of that behavior only comes once the base coin, um, reaches its sort of, um, max price appreciation in my opinion. Um, so yeah. we won't really see a lot of the activity there until much later. That's my view. I don't know if Dark has any thoughts on that. Also, Pepe is about to break its all-time high. <sighs> nice. The one coin that I uh, don't this is, own. What a crazy rally. Yeah, I think it just broke it just now. Yeah, oh, it did, maybe did, not. It, uh, just... Oh, yeah, it's about to. <laughs> yep. That's hilarious. Yeah, Dark, what, what are your thoughts on NFTs? ETH well, and ordinals. And I'd ordinals. like some opinions on ordinals. <laughs> and the grass I have, on a I have both. <laughs> so I never got into ordinals. I think that I don't know. It was just replaying everything that happened on ETH back on. Yeah, Bitcoin. fair enough. And, that, honestly. I, I mean, like, a, I'm the shittest tier, um, like slightly above Swiss, but I'm the shittest tier <laughs> NFT trader on the planet. So I'm, slightly I'm above good. Swiss and the shit is tier. Like that is a dunk and a half. I love it. <laughs> saying that ordinals, oh, saying that ordinals are the same as ETH. That's so culturally insensitive. <laughs> Coming from Madrid, I can understand. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like overall, I think they're they're trading just like the tokens are, which is you have to be really selective about what you buy. So stuff like Milady. Uh, I, I, I yeah. could see that Pepe place, because they're yeah. going to do like retarded shit all the time. Yeah, it's all Pepe um, dudes. And then like stuff like Pudgies, where they're actually building something out that could be successful long term. But these things are going to they're going to price it in like in lumps and then sort of sit around doing nothing for a long time. So I don't think we're going to mm. get the same sort of playbook that we did last time where everything just goes up, goes crazy. Mm. Um, and then ordinals, I think over a longer time period, because Bitcoin is now becoming this like historical chain, it still doesn't really do much as much as the community is trying to make it do stuff. Um, <laughs> mm. So having like levels of provenance on there, I think is going to be valuable in, in the long term. So if you've got, you know, one of the popular early collections on there, I think that's uh, something that you could probably stick around with. Long term, although punks were supposed to be that on Ethereum, and they've shut the bed as well. So yeah, well, yeah. that was yeah. that was you just you. absolutely you destroying them. But, but V ones haven't shut the bed. I just really want to. <laughs> I really want to drill that home right now. No the, one. Yeah, the no. ultimate actually, wealth the liquidity. <laughs> no Dude, one. I'm not even joking. V1s. That's actually imagine, the biggest bull case for V one punks right now. Bro, imagine all the you, capital goes back into V one. I'm telling you, V ones will flip punks. I put out this tweet purposely is a bit of a meme just so i could ever claim clout on this idea but i'm just like i love the fact that you are like tanking the v2s because that makes for a good argument for the v1s um mm, twist what's so, their yeah. floor right now 1.73 uh, 1.73 oh dude I, uh, fuck. I, i'm actually i'm actually kind I of getting one at three ETH if it makes you guys feel any better and i thought i was a genius when i went to five ETH, and then now it's gone back to one <laughs> that's 7. when pudgies and v1s were the same price right uh v1s were slightly more expensive i remember um <laughs> and then they both ran up so they're both at five ETH, and we're at that dinner and um i think it was like i think for argument's sake i think pudgies were slightly less at like 4.8 and punks were like 5.3 and we're like yeah yeah we're, you know it's a good trade you know pudgies are good and then you know i was like yeah i'll go with the v1s and then yeah that ended like, up i wasn't being even that terrible. long ago like it feels like like yeah. like thinking about it like you could have bought like a fuckload of lils for like 0.3 when it was like yeah cheap <laughs> yeah i tell you what's a good buy 
right now, um, which I don't know too much about. I just know that they are, in terms of like branding, they're probably the ones that I'd put on similar par with Pudgies, maybe a bit less, is the Nouns. Um, I think their branding is like really, really good. So you can go buy a Noun for... Five ETH, wow. Noun. Five ETH, yeah, when they were selling for like 200 in the last book. Are they still Uh, releasing a new one every day? Because like, I thought that's yeah, what... but like oh, but, now. but the dynamics of it are like really um, I don't know actually. It's like a variable that I can't really Do forecast for with my tiny brain. But like, there's only a thousand yeah. of them now, and in another three years, there's only going to be two thousand, I guess. So it's like, you know, I yeah. don't think it's the worst bet. The I actually like that. Dynamics, yeah, yeah, well, I actually don't think it's the worst bet either. Like, Pardon? didn't the DAO completely self-destruct? Oh, I don't know. Did they? Is that why they're so cheap right now? I thought so, yeah. Yeah, there was some kind of like fork. I think DCF God was involved. Um, no. Because but the, the DAO was such a, it was such a typical DAO. They were just paying <laughs> for people to like dress up in women's clothing and, and like put <laughs> nouns onto random objects. It was fucking weird. Um, oh, no so way. I don't know about this actually. I'm going to look Typical right Swiss now. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so it might be worth of, doing the doing the background on that before you, uh, yeah, buy a buy the V one yeah. now. Well, I saw it because they they got involved with like a uh, v, the fuck fuck. Did you just say the V one now? <laughs> well, that's what it will be if they forked it. You'll be buying the V one now. Like... Oh goddamn! But um, the the yeah, I thought branding wise, I think they're like everywhere. Like those glasses are now like etched into like a lot of stuff it's like similar to the kevin branding um so yeah i don't know i think that could be a really good bet considering they were like 200 eth in the bull um now being at five i don't think that's like the worst risk to reward but um yeah i'll probably do some research five is a sure lot of money these it. days yeah it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> got to reprogram I'm, that i'm in calculating your head. eth at like two thousand us like, like 1500 bucks in my head <laughs> yeah i'm like oh, one ETH. that's like a MacBook, like, yeah, like... Yeah, I think I actually did the math. Market. Like, when I bought the V1 for 3 ETH, I think it was back when ETH was... Uh, I need to look at the chart, because I remember when it was. But I think ETH was, like, a lot cheaper. And I think I'm down in USD and ETH terms, but I think it's not by much, considering how much ETH has gone up. Yeah, I um, bought my Pudgy when ETH was, like, 17 or 1800, I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, so you're up on USD and ETH. Nice. Yeah, right but yeah. it was at 22. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Don't, Fair. Don't, Dude, what's don't. that heresy on the chart? This coin sucks. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, you can still see that. Disrespect. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, my God. Wait, I'm going to have a look. What are you even looking at? What coin is that I'm reading it right now? Oh, it, ETH. <laughs> Oh, it's yeah, funny. It's it's yeah, so chart. funny how the chart looks good <laughs> that, now. That, that was back. That was back horrendous. then. <laughs> I love how the chart looks good now, but like a few days ago, it looked fucking horrendous. Yeah. So I was looking at some fractals before, and I I was looking at like the last time ETH did this like mass ETH BTC did this like massive like downswing and then swing back up, and it was like uh, June twenty twenty two, July twenty twenty two. Um, uh, actually, that's a pretty shit time to, to have a look at. But yeah, I was I was originally yeah. Never mind. Oh my... I'm not going to go down that path. <laughs> oh my god! I'm reading the uh, Pepe Bros chat. I just counted. Twenty one people said this in a row. Different people. Pepe is a universal symbol of freedom. A beacon. A beacon of green light at the end of the dark tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> 21 different people said that in a row oh god oh my god I it, it appears I am in the wrong tokens uh, I have a bit of Pepe I have like a tiny bit and I had a huge position and I sold and I flipped to like sh- flip flopping with like bonk and a bunch of other coins back like when those were popping off mm. and I should have just fucking held my frog yeah, I remember, I remember, I think it was on the dark stream originally, I like did my sort of like 
falls for the year and I said Pepe would never reach all time high. That was wrong. Bro, but you know how bad it was performing though? <laughs> Like it think was, about how bad it was, yeah, how it was cucked bad. it was. Like it was actually it was, it was around here. As I'm as, sure. as Sasaka <laughs> said, it was the uh, atom of meme coins. Yeah, I'm pretty like, sure. So like long. the original dark episode was like somewhere around here. <laughs> oh, I want to kill myself. <laughs> uh, fuck. Have you? It's did you so guys see the, the um hindsight, so the, the tweet from the meme coins? And someone did this like massive long tweet and was like, "Pop with Pepe." Or pop with mm -hmm, pet I saw that. or something is like the new Soluna Avax. That would be amazing. If it's so. like all my bags. <laughs> but yeah, someone. Uh, I've got to try and find the tweet. I'll try and find the tweet. I saw, later, I, but... I saw a few people do it, and then I saw the Popcat official account do that funny tweet of like the cat yeah. in the sunrise, and then it had like the whiff dog and the frog. Like it was pretty funny. But it's I mean, unusual for these things to, to run for this long, right? It is, it yeah. is, yeah. I, I think, like, from a mindshare perspective, in terms of, like, you know, when you think about, like, what normies are going to touch, like, a lot of people still see, like, they, they've got their bias where they think, like, oh, I can't buy BTC because I don't have $69,000. Yeah. So I need to buy something cheaper. Oh, I can't buy ETH because it's $3,000. Oh, Solana, I can buy, or... Whiff, I can buy, or Pepe, I can buy, because they think that they have to buy the whole thing, much like you have to do with like stocks, unless like your stocks enable it to split. Um, and I've had conversations like that recently, which um, reminded me of this fact because I didn't think people actually believe that. Um, but I was quite shocked that uh, you know this was still the the case. So I, I definitely think like when people look at these top coins uh like the bitcoins and that and they're like going well i can't afford to buy one of them so i'm gonna buy something else down the um and i actually i had it i went out the other night and had a conversation with a random and then um somehow got into like uh investing like yeah i do a little bit of investing in stocks because i didn't want to make crypto that talking about stocks instead of doing it oh do you do crypto at all and like yeah 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 i do crypto um i uh recently bought Pepe. I was like, oh, it was like completely left field because the person didn't seem like the type to buy Pepe of all. But yeah, they were buying Pepe. So, okay. It didn't seem like a profitable trader. Is that what you're saying? N no, just just the, the type of person that this person was. Like, yeah. probably not someone that would know Pepe or understand what Pepe is. But yeah, they were buying Pepe. I was like, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, um, I think the, the low unit bias is obviously still a factor. Um, and when people see that like the crypto coins have gone up a lot, they probably go, well, I want to get the thing that's going to give me the most returns. Memes are going to do the best. So let me buy the best performing meme. So I, I think memes, like there's like going to be two sides of the coin. It's like the majors and the memes. I still believe that it's going to be like a major thing. In, in the next few months um, all for this cycle and I think the, the mid projects like everything that's like an actual project in between it's going to be like picking a needle in a haystack in terms of getting like some sort of decent outperform say the yeah. phrase one, say the phrase <laughs> meme coin super cycle <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the meme coin super cycle that I have is that the what I it's all of the find... memes that you don't own that are going up. Well, so, <laughs> so, so like, like what I tend to find with most people is they go, I don't want to buy the meme that's performing well. I want to buy the next version of yeah, that meme that's performing the well. Derivative. Yeah, no one wants to buy Whiff, but everyone wants to buy the next Whiff. No one wants to buy yeah. Pepe, but they want to buy the next Pepe. It's like, but then Pepe and Whiff and all of that will, will still continue yeah. to perform well. And like they'll probably still do some multiples, and it would probably be decent multiples, but everyone will still be chasing the next thing. So whilst there may be a quote unquote meme coin super cycle, it'll be a super cycle where most people that play the game get fucking wrecked. Still, it'll be like like fucking Binance um, chain shitcoin season. Or, um, we're like maybe there's a few that do well, or maybe it's just BNP that does well. 
Um, but I'm a hundred percent with one Al on this because I know I actually know a few normies that have literally got absolutely chopped up just buying like the ten or five million dollar memes, thinking that because no one wants to buy like if you're like an intelligent normie, no one and like you actually do shit on chain, no one wants to buy the fucking coin that's already at like five hundred mil. Everyone wants to buy the shit that's at like five mil, but like the percentage. Of fucking doing well. I feel well like it's got worse is... than that. I feel like most people want to buy in at like 200k, 200K market yeah, cap. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I'm just going off what these dudes did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and their buy, their thought was exactly the same. They're like, fuck, I just want to get like a fucking 100x or a 50x. Like, imagine this goes to a bill. Like, that's their like thought process. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like th there's gonna be so people are saying, oh, meme coin super cycle. It's so mid curve. It's like no, like. 95 percent of traders are just going to get wrecked anyway so it's still going to like the people that find like you know that one meme like pepe or you know like whiff or hopefully like popcat or something like that that's already like gone up a lot and established with like strong liquidity and shit like yeah they'll do well but like the other dudes that everyone's still trying to find 100x and they're not going to buy the fucking top memes that are already at like half a bill or a bill or Pepe's at six bill, I think, or something like that now. So, have any of you guys ever hit hundred X before? No. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, actually, really? on, yeah, on like small. Nah, positions. hit a hit a thirty or forty X. Never hit hundred X. So, wait, what did I hit on with? Actually, I probably should have started this at a more simpler question. Are you guys profitable? Um, <laughs> and trading. <laughs> I'm um, a no, so we'll move to the next question. It, um, it helps when you're getting, you know, like 40k ed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Dark, you're 100x. Like, yeah, that, that, that does help. Yeah. <laughs> Never gotten one. Uh, mine's kind of cheating. So I got into the. It's not, well, I guess it's kind nah, of. Nah, 100x is 100x, bro. Don't, don't worry how you got it. <laughs> I got. Um, into the Olympus style pre sale. Oh, that's sick. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. That, so, that would have been amazing. I guess I, I held for long enough. Uh, it ended up being about an 800x, I'd say. Yeah. Fuck. That's an crazy. 800x? That's, yeah. yeah. Bro, bro, what? T up seed investors are down 50% from all time highs, but they're actually up still 600x, I think. So yeah. The thing launched at like the thing yeah. launched at probably a two hundred X and I didn't yeah. sell. Um Would you have sold day was... one? Like were you unlocked or was it locked? No, it's fully fully liquid, the whole the whole oh thing. Oh my god. So the pre wow. the pre sale was like five hundred and thirty dollars or something like that. Um and it launched at like seventy. Like my what if you bought one chunk at five hundred dollars? It was worth about seventy seventy five on the day of, like the day that it went live. No way. Wait, wait. Say it again. So if you bought, so if you bought in for five hundred dollars, I think it was just over five hundred dollars. Um, yeah. And that I remember looking at Zappa or Zerion or whatever on the day yeah. that it launched, and it was yeah. worth like seventy five k. Oh, that's crazy! Fucking hell. On that day, yeah. but then you just held it for a bit longer. That's crazy. Yeah, so there were like three big pumps and I sold out on the second one. And if I'd have held a month longer for the third one, like that one trade would have netted me seven figures. But <laughs> I sold early. So uh, in hindsight, uh, like it was it was the right thing to do. Trade. And I beat myself up a little bit at the time because it sucks because you only had to wait like another 30 days. Um, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was I, I knew that I was going to fuck it up this cycle because I like I did a a retrospective on like last cycle post more and i and i figured i was like if i was in that position again would i be able to hold like that and i and i was like no i know too much now like i'm too much of a midwit that i would so... I, I wouldn't have been as stupid as i was with that and i got lucky um and so i knew this cycle i was going to be way more conservative uh, but like that's kind of the way it goes i guess you have to yeah. move through these stages to get to the right side of the curve. I feel like if you've made a good trade like that where you've netted like a crazy amount of money, it's it's probably the smart thing to do would be conservative protecting your capital at some point. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people, yeah. 
when you make a big trade, they'll just go try to catch the next one. And it's like probably not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe take yeah. some time off, just relax and let let shit do it, let everything settle. You know. Yeah, that's actually insane though. That's really good. That's a very good trade. Uh, what about you guys, Wynal mm. Sticks? Have you guys got any hundred DMT, X's? Ad, my DMT airdrop, well, technically. I, I could have got mm. in the ground on DMT, but I did lazy. I know I was pretty down bad at the time, but like I think it was a million dollar valuation uh, market cap at the time. Now it's like yeah. 160 mil FTV. Mm. That's a very good guess, trade. Yeah, I got like 54. Yeah. That's sick. I've never gotten actually like a big like hundred X or anything like that. I've or gotten four, a bunch of like maybe. I've gotten a bunch of like thirty or twenties, but never like something like that. Like best probably honestly. Like best return on investment probably honestly Pandora because I literally mm. bought that at like four or five mil originally. And then I added more at 10 and yeah i think it went to like 300 mil or something like that um so yeah that was good um because usually the the other coins that i've gotten like a 20x on i went in with like nothing basically um but at least pandora i went in with like a decent chunk of money um and yeah that was pretty good that was just, that was at a good time because i got that and then like two days later i got the dime airdrop so like that was that was like really good that was probably my best week of this cycle Really think, good, yeah, really good time I, of the year for me. I think that Pandora trade of yours was actually like one of my favorites to watch and hear. Yeah, about I, I think you... I, I liked it so much because it, it went up in like three days so quickly. But yeah, but yeah. and you, the, the thing is, I think one of your strengths is that um, you're pretty good at like calling a decision given like large amounts of uncertainty. And I think the Pandora one. Um, this might be wrong, but I think the reason why it works so well for you is because I think while every even us in the chat weren't sure about it, you were just mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to take a punt and see how it goes. And it ended up being a really and good a decision. And a sizable punt you. too. Yeah. So I think you should always feel stoked about that, man, because I think that's like a real skill that you have of just calling a shot mm -hmm. on a decision and then sticking to it and then getting out when you want to get out. Yeah. I, I, as I said, I sold a, sold a large chunk of it like a bit early. Like I sold a large chunk at like 100 and... 50 mil market cap which is like literally only like a 20 or 25 x from when i oh probably a 30 x from my original buys but yeah it went a lot higher i think it went to like 300 or 400 mil but um with like fucked liquidity like the liquidity i think at the top was like 90 or mil or something like that but um but yeah no nah, that was yeah that was my best as i said i've never gotten like 100 x gotten a few 20s or 30s but yeah. um I think my original yeah, that sounds with, like with, a with sick buys trade, were. to be honest. Yeah. I think my yeah, with you buys, did well on that. Yeah, my original whiff buy was 300x. Oh, oh that's, fucking I, hell, that's I, crazy. I sized, I sized up like around 30 cents. Which is, mm. is that still? Still a great time. That's still 100x, size up, isn't honestly. it? Mm. 30 cents? No, no. That's yeah, that's awesome. 10x. Wait, 10X, from 30 cents. Yeah, 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 10x. Yeah. My from, original whiff that's buy. That's crazy. Because it was, it was like 30 or 30. 20 or 30, 40 cents for ages. Yeah. And then it just did a 10, 15 X after that. Yeah. That's crazy. My original was like uh, at like 10 mil market cap. My original uh, buys. Z's and then it like resort. Nuked to like nothing. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Yeah. Whip's been my best trade I've ever done. I think the worst one I round trip this cycle was Shark Cat because I bought like a lot of it at like mm. 80 mil and it went, it 4X. Like I bought, I went in with like some decent size, and then it forexed in like twenty four hours or something like that, and I was just like, "This is going to a billy," because like Bohm <laughs> just just went to a billion. I'm like, "This shit's going to a billy." Like, and I mid, I, I just like got so arrogant to a point where like this, this is literally just going to go to a billion, and I round trip the whole thing, which is pretty funny. But yeah, we <laughs> do that sometimes. Cases. Doc, I know <laughs> and, you asked sticks before, like what he's looking at but what are you looking at like mm, I th yeah i think i should last, have asked you last, that last last pod we talked about prime a lot um i think we talked about tier a bit and i think ironically i think tier at the time we talked about the death spiral the the 
fucking roller coaster thing. Um, and you and I were both talking about Eclipse as being like the the one airdrop to hold out for, but that it didn't work out well. Um, well, what <laughs> happened with that? Like the dev or something? Like the CEO is a pervert, basically. <laughs> Oh, I saw that. <laughs> oh, yeah, not ideal for not ideal, not ideal for me. For people trying to yeah. trying to get the airdrop. <laughs> Such is life. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm still in prime. I think it's like a it's a cycle hold for me. Um, I'm willing to be patient on it. Um, so yeah, we'll put that to one side. Uh, mm-hmm. like, yeah, just uh, looking for that. Like you mentioned, what was it? Pop with Pep is the is the phrase. Yeah. Like yep, maybe yep. it's memes, maybe that's it. But um, yeah, just trying to figure out like what what could absolutely rip. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's AI stuff. Maybe Morpheus. Like that. That was more of a on chain launch recently. Um, Morpheus. Uh, I've not heard of Morpheus. Can you explain Morpheus? It's, it's, I Entrain cannot launch. because I've I basically went. I was going to stake. You could stake ETH, stake ETH even, ETH um, to it to farm it, and it just looked like washed. There was a lot of people in there, so I didn't bother farming it. But I know mm-hmm. that um, what's his name Voorhees is it Eric Voorhees has built mm-hmm. a private permissionless uh, GPT on top of this. Um, I don't think it's this one. No, it's not this one. Go on, probably find it on Twitter. It'd be easier. Uh, so he's built a, a chatbot that you can go and play around with. Um, yeah, you can see it. Uh, more, go back, delete, delete, delete. AIS should be that one. It's got a green symbol. Don't oh, type Morpheus it. Morpheus AI. AI. Uh, AIS. Yep, yep, here we go. Could be that. I don't know if that's the... That doesn't look like the... No. Mm. There's not many followers on that, so that's probably false. Probably but that's the right <laughs> um, the right symbol for it. Anyway, so he's built something on top, and like I say, with last cycle, you know, Rune went crazy, and that was something that he was related to as well. Um, mm. So I don't know. I I'm just trying to sort of we're we're in that last period, I think, where we're we're probably over halfway through the cycle now, probably sixty mm-hmm. percent, mm-hmm. and so I might. Like pick up one or two more bags. I think Ondo could do it as well, just because that R W A narrative is persistent. And Larry hasn't even really gone on TV yet to pump, um, you know, tokenization of everything. I think for ETH and Ondo and and R W A, you've got these blokes with enormous power and like big bags. And so to be on their side, like to be on the same side as them, Mm -hmm. or in the same sort of tokens, would be the right thing to do so yeah, yeah. ondo is one that i've looked at uh, doesn't ondo have well. like really like obfuscated supply yes almost. they do i read That's, about that actually. It, so yeah it's all this stuff that adds up to it being a one of these trades that can just go bonkers because it's like mm. L- luna had 20 percent yield and people weren't outright shitting on it but some people obviously figured out that the mechanism wasn't going to work and that didn't stop it going to 100 bill mm. so mm. Um, True. Those things add up to like, Good could trades. the could the narrative overpower all of the people who like us are sitting around and saying, well, it's you know the tokenomics are no good mm. and it's already so expensive. I think that's we're the, the ones that end up buying buying halfway through the the run. Um, yeah. I definitely so, think yeah. that's true. Like, I think the Ondo narrative, as as of right now, it's overpowering any sort of bud around its tokenomics or you know supply overhead or whatever the fuck you want to call it but yeah this is the thing if the narrative is just so persistent to a point where yeah it's just so overpowering then it doesn't matter whereas if the narrative dries up who's gonna buy it you know what i mean so mm. you yeah. think we're 60 percent of the way through the cycle dark yeah it's gonna yeah, I think, yeah. touch on that yeah well, what, um, what what makes you feel that way Uh, because this time clinging onto my bags feels like I'm starting to push my luck. Whereas in previous sell-offs, I felt like, yeah, it's all good. Like this, it's not over. I don't know. It's like the, the ball tingle. Um, yep. Yep. 
is, is the, the main part of it. It just reminds me of, although everybody's a lot, I think a lot more miserable on the timeline uh, than the last cycle, but it just reminds me of that part, part way through where it was like May mm-hmm. as well and mm-hmm. everything sold off. Oh, fuck. I was having the same feelings today. <laughs> But yeah, I think the dynamics were different. Like you had yeah. SBF, you know, ran it all up turbo into November. Mm. But this time around, we've got election, possible rate cuts. Um, we've just had that big pivot from like the current administration in the US. Mm. These things are going live. Hong Kong, the UK, like the FTSE's, get, we're going to list some ETPs for these things. And now mm-hmm. the US as well. So you've got, you're opening up access to the like the highest tier of bag buyers. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think we've got legs to go into the end of the year, Mm -hmm. but then you run into, and I think I talked about this last time, you're going to have the Tia's and the Gito's and the Ondo's of the world start unlocking massively Mm -hmm. from like October onwards. So I would, I, my target personally is to be like, have taken profit on everything that I want to take profit on by sort of November, December. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously you've got to react to, depending on how it plays out yeah but seeing people call for like 2025 or 2026 like the Raul pals of the world that's good for me because i'm like i i want to be out before them anyway so yeah yeah uh, i, I kind of see it being over more quickly and there's no reason that we can't continue running now now that we've opened up those big like institutional flows maybe 2025 it you know it continues into there but uh personally think we we probably blow off before that and then have a period to think about what we've all done and uh, <laughs> decide if we want to do it all over again <laughs> yeah uh, i i would probably like so uh when i pulled up that eth btc fractal before what i thought i was showing but i realized i got the dates wrong i thought it was like the a bottom um in like eth started eth btc started pumping again. but what i thought might be the case was like from now until I'd say October, not November, because the election is November. It's normally 10th of November, right? It's like somewhere around then. I thought mm-hmm. what might be the case is that like we have like this awesome rally from like now until the election period. And then like everyone's betting on like the Trump sort of re-election as being bullish on our bags. So like the time to take profit on that would be when everyone's bullish <laughs> yeah yeah so so now so like no like october like just a few weeks before would be like the best profit taking like if you think about like eth merge or like all of those eth sort of uh events yeah, like most of, most of that sold off a, a week prior to or two weeks prior or three weeks prior to the actual event so like my thoughts that i was sort of like jotting down today was like yeah maybe um October as like some sort of top and then you wait for the election, see how things play out and then decide based off of, you know, where you, where things sit at that time as to whether or not you continue playing the game or you know, just sit it out for a bit more period of time. Obviously it's all like price action dependent, but yeah, I, I feel similar to you dark and that like it's, now getting to the point where you're like, like, am I really pushing for like another two X or three X from here, or like, should I really be trying to take what I've got so far and mm. kind of enjoy it? Um, because like, if if I'm only looking for a two or three X from here, it's like every time I'm looking for a two three X, like that's normally the time for a sell. Yeah, but it's also like the symptom of a choppy market, right? Choppy markets. Last year. Yeah, like choppy markets tend to do most, like especially after the run that we had prior to it. I I think your theory is very smart. Like I think you're, I think we're going to get a huge run up in October, a very big like month, similar to last year when we had the October month. And yeah, I think then the whole timeline will be bullish and then we, it, it could go either way, I guess. But if everyone's, you know, bullish into a Trump, it could have inverse effects because it could all just already be priced in from October, so from the rally. So yeah, I don't know. 
also dark. Some of us are over leveraged currently, so we don't really need to talk about how we're more than halfway <laughs> through the cycle. Well, that just uh, means you've got eight months to deleverage, so you're all good. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. Like, I, I still think to some degree that um, the extrapolation of some coins to multi-billion dollar valuations um, haven't really Christmas treed back down similar to what they did um, towards the end of last cycle. Um, and I still hold out for the fact that crypto corrected the same way uh, tech did due to the uh, sell off in advance of the um, increase in interest rates. So um, I'm trying to stay op- cautiously optimistic in the sense that I don't believe maybe we will receive any sort of larger correction until there is significant blow off top, like um, significant signs of froth. Um, like, for example, now I don't think we're near a top, even though you could say that us not making new highs off this positive information is is bearish. Um, you're essentially selling maybe too early into the cycle um, and leaving money on the table. But um, yeah, it's just hard to say, really. Um, but yeah, I think if you look at coins like Whiff and Pepe, if they can still um, go up, billions of dollars in their market cap and not essentially Christmas tree down like shipped in, um, then I don't know. There's half an argument there for continuation for longer. Yeah. I think we probably talked about it last time, but it's like, it depends what you're trading and like what Mm. your approach is. And that's why I always try and preface my answers with like, I'm a second cycler. I'm trying to, like I even have something as stupid as price targets. So if ETH hits a certain price, I just take some money into USD because this time around, I want to learn from my mistakes last time, which was basically bag hold everything, get lucky on the complacency bounce and <laughs> basically sell sell some of the complacency bounce. And it's funny, but it's like, that was the only reason that I came out of that cycle with anything was because mm. I was like, oh, it's, I should probably like buy a property. Um, if yeah. I hadn't have made that decision, like I, I think I just would have sat into Ethan till God knows when and probably fucking round trip the whole thing. So this time it's like, well, if I take yeah. on the way up, yeah, people are people are going to say, oh, well, what what did you sell mm. early? And it's like, mm. yeah, but mm. if I've, you know, if I'm if I have cash, then I have options and I can survive. Mm. Um, and while it's nice to like for the ego to try and sell the top, and it's nice for your for your, you know, the total amount of money that you have if you time it well as well it's like Mm. this thing isn't going away now like we've literally just had the green light in the last week so if you you imagine if you're doing decently well and and you're here for another five or six years like how how much could you possibly compound it could be enormous Mm. so my my view on like trying to time this and exit and never touch it again has kind of changed a bit as well yeah the never touching it again joke so stupid yeah, so if we're watching this thing actually become an asset class and a market, it's like nobody's sitting around going, "Oh, what's the cycle top of oil going to be?" Yeah. You just you just trade the market as it comes, right? There's a news event, yeah. maybe there's like some oil field goes offline. It's like right, you trade that, and things go up and down based on geopolitical stuff or like actual fundamentals of of how the oil market works. Well, crypto is becoming like that in front of our very eyes. Like ETH and BTC are not going to necessarily trade on retail piles into one side, drives it way beyond um, where it should be, and then we sell off massively because all the smart money exits. Mm-hmm. There's going to be lots of different participants at different levels and a lot more liquidity coming in. So I think it trades a lot more like a commodity market. So it goes mm-hmm. up and down quite drastically sometimes, but I don't know that it's going to be the same sort of four year cycle to the extent that we've seen. Do do you think like if you look at like the S P chart um put up yeah like you look at like when it corrected back in March and then get like when BTC corrected same sort of time. So I still feel like there's so much correlation between the two markets at the moment. Um and the fact that there is such correlation to me just 
speaks to the fact that like we're not really trading on this like independent sort of run um and that like it's really still like trading mm -hmm. along with equities and because it's trading equities along with, yeah yeah because it's trading along with equities like a lot of the the, the behavior is, is very less uh, retail driven probably more general market driven and and like from an equity standpoint like a lot of the charts look quite good um and like i don't know if you would say that like we've reached some sort of equities top much the same as we've reached the crypto top well, like not saying it's top but like we're, we're near the end of an equities cycle um whereas i feel like when btc was doing its thing last cycle it was like outpacing equities significantly and sort of trading in its own sort of realm and it was only once the interest rates came into effect that like it really started locking back in in correlation um i think i think also now that it is a institutional asset it will trade obviously it's a going to be still very volatile but considering there is trad fire money actually coming into the space it'll trade more or more so like a traditional asset in the sense that it will be similar to as you said spx even though it was already pretty correlated but um yeah yeah so, like it's it's kind of hard to say just because like if it is that's trading, a good thing that's a good thing yeah, because it's, it's, SDX will go up forever. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's where my mind's kind of at. It's like, you know, SPX, or like the equity side, has just been like this perma bid up only market. Um, it will be like that forever. forever in a day. So, like, if it is trading in, in lockstep with it, then does that mean that it should be doing something similar? And if that's the case, then like maybe the beta sort of comes down uh, over time but in the meantime it's still best uh, relative yeah i mean it's the it's the pull to tudor jones like fastest horse isn't it right so if your mm. macro environment is risk on then btc and crypto assets are a much smaller um, pool of liquidity than everything else yeah. so they're going to go up the most as people jump in um so yeah, I was going to say you should uh, like zoom out as far as you can on the SPX chart because overall, my time frame, and I think I've seen Sticks tweet about this, is like the denominator is what is becoming worthless. Worthless. Yeah. And you know, I tried to highlight this to my mates the other day. Is when we went to uni, um, when I I finished in like 2011. But while I was there, I could buy a pint for one pound, pint of beer yeah. for one pound. And if you go to London now, it's nearly like there are places where it's nearly ten pounds. So in Fuck. not even in our lifetime, but in a small part of our lifetime, you've seen a ten x on something <laughs> that you you know the price of really well. Yeah, the pint yeah, yeah. And it's like, how much does this need to change before people start to realise? And I think what you're seeing in this chart here that you've got up now, one L, is something is clicking because look at the fucking state of that thing. It's just up and to the right. <laughs> the whole and if you the more you zoom out the more like you, you can't do it here but if you look at the one that goes back to like the 30s or whatever this thing is just going parabolic and it's because at some point everybody it just clicks and it's like oh this this shit is worthless like i need to be in stocks i need to be in property i need to be in uh crypto like something that protects my purchasing power because it's just going to shit like literally on a daily basis even in developed nations um the so my my time frame is now like yeah. I want to get yeah. to the point where I only sell this stuff when I need it rather than yeah. making a decision based Especially on what the B2C price is on the day. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. <laughs> I mean, looking at GCR's tweet as well, like he flipped to being an investor and he's holding spot BTC and ETH and he has no intention of actually selling it for years. Like I don't know personally what he does, but. That, that's just what he said on his tweet. Um, now that's also now that it is an institutionalized asset, if it performs similar to SPX, which it will if SPX keeps going up, 
then yeah, there's no reason to actually sell it unless you need it for, you know, actual purchasing of goods and services. But also, the funniest tweet I've ever... I, I did see the other day, I forgot who it was. It was a very funny comment on my post and it said, uh, Bitcoin is worthless if they fix the cash supply, but they'll never fix the cash supply. So, mm -hmm. yeah. They'll never actually fix the problem. They'll just delay it because all the dudes in charge are like 80 years old and they're not going to see the ramifications of what happens. Yeah. They'll be dead. So it doesn't really matter to them as long as they enrich themselves. So, yeah. I think I saw a Jing Jing Bao Tao tweet. Jeremy. Say something yeah, Jeremy. Today, like, um, I can't remember what his Twitter is nowadays, but um, there's something along the fact that things are like it should have broken like everything should have broken in 2020 but it didn't yeah. um yeah here we go holy like, shit we tripled up in a decade economy equities broke for all intents and purposes around Volmageddon. back in the um nothing mattered anymore the cheating future generations with the ponzi in it money got equities it doesn't fucking matter it's overvalued it doesn't matter if Things get worse. That's like if you know they're not gonna let things break, then you just continue playing the game where you do what every person doesn't do what we do and buy the the ETF um, because ETFs are the only way to safely make money. Um, your investments. That's only like some people or like you buy property um, or try and the game to try and accelerate your your net worth somewhat more so it 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 is in a weird spot and i think that's where a lot of the conflict comes from is like it can and should go up a lot more a lot of this stuff and you need to play where the the capital is going to um but knowing where to play is the hardest part and i mean honestly it's the same as normies like yeah, they're so brain dead that they'll they'll do the, you know, the DCing into SPX. You, you can literally just do the brain dead, at BTC and ETH. I mean, like obviously, probably should have been doing that for the last like two years, but like it's could be as simple as that, and I think it is as simple as that. Like to outperform e to outperform equities, you do that. You outperform the normies with BTC because it's just like hedge against monetary debas debasement. But yeah, it's interesting. Do you think like a lot of the sentiment around like how like in, in terms of like in our little world, because our world, despite how frothy it might seem at times, is still very small. Like, it's not. Yeah. Because it, it, it's so small because like there's no the majority, one on CT no one, compared to the real world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if you spoke to any, if you just went, like if you were wage cocking like myself and you went into the office and there's like 200 people there and you just went and asked any one of those people about anything that's going on in our sort of world. Not a single one of them would probably know about it. They Maybe all think everything's going to crash. It's it's literally yeah. the complete opposite. Like even the stock, they they actually genuinely think the real estate market. They all think it's going to crash. It's literally the well, exact. Well, they think opposite. real estate's going to go up and 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 stuff. Yeah, all, all the ones yeah. that are in real estate will go up. But it's it's literally the exact opposite. All these doomers yeah. that are predicting like this crash, everything will melt up because the currency is debasing and people aren't going to. They don't yeah. care. Like mm. even at high rates, they have to service the debt so they're print at the moment they're printing one trillion every 100 days at low rates people will just borrow because like the it's low rates either way they print money like it's it's well, just and, like but an even, even when they're high rates the the problem with high rates is that anyone that has cash is effectively Wins. getting like a, a, a handout <laughs> and that's from like the every government. rich person on the planet <laughs> it's effectively like you know giving government stimmies to to rich people it's all like, the corporations it, like apple 150 yeah. billion or 200 billion cash warren buffett billions okay. in cash like they it doesn't matter like it's just yeah. a, it's just a way, number like yeah everything's fucked like it's just doesn't yeah it's do, either do way think, rates it i was yeah, gonna sorry, say go dark on. do you think like because this cycle's not playing out the way that previous cycles played out in in terms of the fact that like we reached all-time high prior to halving is changing a lot of like the old guards like all the the second third fourth cyclers opinions on where we are in the cycle uh, what was the tweet the other day like the old guard is washed right 
yeah yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> that was that was today <laughs> but like that that's my feel um, is like a lot of people like last cycle you could literally just run back the eth rotates into no sorry btc rotates into eth which rotates into the next large cap which rotates into small caps and then it rotates through that was like the secrets of crypto twitter account like that had like the there's that infograph um that like everyone used to share but like this cycle that's not happened at all and all that's happened is it's gone btc went up memes went up um and like we went it we has I, so I'd, level I'd, two and three i'd argue that it has happened okay uh, but just on a different time frame right so if you look from 2023 to today btc has pumped chopped pumped chopped pumped chopped all the way into um etf approval sell off mm -hmm. pump mm -hmm. chop pump chop pump. so we've had the if you zoom out far enough look at that on on btc yeah um btc's had its run right True, now true. ETH is is positioned to do the same. Yep. So it could actually be that the whole cycle is one big version of that um, where we get mm, old coins right. later on this year after ETH mm -hmm. runs for the next three to four months. Um, and then that's it. That's your transition through one to the next to the next. And obviously within that, we've had, you know, we have had altcoin out before. Yeah, that's I think what's cooking coins. people right now. They're like the little, the, the select, alts that are rallying that have basically cooked everyone that are like i'm not allocated to this alt and then they're pissed off and they're just like i don't know where we are in this cycle yeah so because think, usually it's like pve like all the alts pump exactly yeah that's what i was going to say is like that sentiment i think comes specifically from you've got the guys like donald and cred who um that's trade how majors think, yeah. on, on like very high time frames they're sort of clashing with this new group of young people i guess that have come in bought whiff or pop cat mm -hmm. or something else and and they're like well you know my, my token's done great or like i've been in the right sector so it's just mm -hmm. a like a complete cross purpose between like th those two different types of um participant i think mm -hmm. yeah and that's where that kind of confusion come, comes from because it really is dependent on what you've been looking at as to where you think we are 100 percent agree I feel like like the whiff, uh, the sorry, the Donalds and the creds of the world, like like they they have their sort of system and they've had that yeah. system for so long, and that and system that they 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 built it in 2017 because that's when they sort of made the the name for themselves. They were able to replay it in 2021, pretty pretty good, and it, and it worked well for them. And then so now they're coming into 2023, 2024, and um you know Donald sold 32k or whatever it was at the time because despite saying that 19k was a forever hold um but he, he had a he had a change in life circumstances and everything so like his he, he's similar to what you were saying before is like he, he doesn't need to take those risks and sell the you know the complacency exactly. balance afterwards like he's like i'm gonna lock in what i can when i can and i'm gonna sell on the way up so that, and his size is huge so it's it's completely different to yeah. comparing me to him where he you know, if he makes 20%, it's like me making like a lot. I need like multiples on that, you know? Yeah, 100%. So, 100%. And then, and then, so like, if you're those guys, you're like the sober guys coming into the party at like 12, 12 at night, like midnight. And you're just seeing all these people just like drunk off their minds. And you're like, well, not going to have fun here because I haven't been drinking up until now. So you guys are all fucked. I'm going home. Um, that's yeah. like my kind of view on where that's sort of like that's where the state is currently at whereas like where i see a lot of this stuff now it does very much remind me of like when i came into crypto late like mid like early 21 late 2021 but then i also wasn't around for like the uni swap and the DeFi summer and all of that and I'm exactly sure that you could have argued that was like market froth you know what i mean yeah, exactly. So I've, I've got a quick, quick anecdote on that, actually, because this has just triggered a memory. So I, I remember distinctly making a mental note. So I joined crypto probably like March 2020 and was figuring stuff out during DeFi summer. And I followed Cred and Donald because I was interested in like learning to trade. And they, mm -hmm. I, I'd have to go back and find the tweets because I don't think I ever bookmarked them, but I... I've made this mental note that they were wrong. Like they missed it. They missed the pump after 
the March crash. Mm. And I was, I was like the idiot. I turned up figuring out what DeFi was, like holding on to Wi-Fi for dear life, like all this <laughs> stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. And those, and I remember towards the end of the summer, those guys still weren't positioned and stuff that they were saying was like, yep. this is, it's not going to last, it's bearish. And then they came around to like, well, okay, we've missed it. And I, I remember that going into the end of the year and thinking, right, I'll remember that because when those accounts say certain things, like that's how I should treat it. And so this time around, you're seeing exactly the same thing. But this time, like I've got a bit of experience under my belt, so I can now see the guys that have come in and bought WIF and are now up like millionaires from a 10K investment. They think mm. they're fucking geniuses. True. And it looks yeah. like people like Donald have, have missed it, but you don't know their circumstances either. Um, Correct. But those yeah. guys aren't perfect. Like they're not exactly. the guys that are going to be in this at the Pico bottom and out at the Pico top. They're going to trade level to level through a mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting to like see that from the two different sides. Yeah, to add to that as well, I remember Jim um, Talbot coming out and saying how he traded the um, December to May section of last cycle really well and then openly admitted that due to the things that he watches in the markets, he actually didn't, he actually sat out a good majority of the, 100%, um, I remember it. the, the July run up and only got involved in maybe September for a little bit of it. Um, but it was just interesting to hear that when he was like, yeah, like I caught this part, but then got, didn't get that. Whereas when I was in that cycle, I was like, oh, cool. Like I'm just holding this forever. And I'm grateful that it's just like going up again. Little to know, uh, little did yeah. I know, I should say, that it was going to go down from there. But yeah. I remember it clear as day because that's when I learned about range, range trading because that time when... Um, that it was the june july period or may june july period and it was btc ranging between like 28k and like 40k and that's when i got into like in silico jim talbot trader sc like all of those guys and they're really good level t and, and and crypto credit as well i went through all of that whole period during that range period because i was like fuck i could have sold btc much higher. I didn't know anything about trading. I, d I was just listening to fucking um, whatever that uh, what Bitcoin did guy is called, the guy from the UK. I was just listening to him and like Preston Pish and they were all telling me that like Bitcoin's going to go up forever. And um, then I discovered trading and I was like, oh, maybe I should learn this. And I studied those guys religiously. It broke the, the bottom of the range level. And then I was like, oh, range range low has been finally broken i'm going to sell everything and then everything went up um and then continued to go up when it hit range high and then continued to go up even further um so i, I remember it clearly but i i think the lesson i got at that time is like there's always a regime and there's traders that do well in trends and there's traders that do well in range and the range traders um you know tend to get popular and you know their, their opinions get highly valued in a range period and then the trend traders uh, vice versa. So um, I, d I definitely think there's a, a period of that now and considering we've been in this fucking range since like uh, March, uh, not surprising that like a lot of these names are popping up again. Yeah, I agree. It was like when like CZ and all those dudes last year when we in that like 20 to 30k range or 25 to 30k, like they were like, playing the range perfectly and they're like ah oh, yes sold 31k again sold 31 and then it, like it worked John until it didn't it. yeah, yeah. John until was it, killing yeah, until it, it during that time yeah and it's like it works until it doesn't and it's like until it does when it doesn't it's like you look like a fool and the other dudes who are like momentum traders or have just been bullish or bearish the entire time and have stuck to their conviction then they look like the geniuses and you look like the fool so yeah. it's a bit of like both you know yeah 100 percent. i remember don it's buying just, this this wick i remember don buying that wick um like at 30k mm. and i remember him buying yeah. this wick as well and and he sold the top on both of those each time like on the range yeah. i remember it very yeah clearly. so he, like he he was trading the range and he traded it really well like mm. in that period of time and then you know eventually he was you know wrong like because it works yeah. till it doesn't yeah so 100%. but yeah no he's he was still traded well it's just like sometimes it's, it just won't work because it's it's not it's not like that simple. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, it it does it does make me think. Like I I think sticks. You and I have spoke about this a bit. Like 
cycle is just going to be the cycle. Um, oh, it's that's exactly what I'm thinking. It's just going to be a classic four year cycle. Everyone's mid curving it right now, thinking like either we're in like a left translated because we've hit all time highs early, or that um, you know super cycle or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a super cycle that like institutions will pump a bag. I think like cycles still exist. Uh, this one I think is a normal cycle, but. Could be wrong. You don't know. But I'm just got that's like my conviction. So that's what I'm doing. Mm. I'm not going to change it just because other people are saying something. You know, everyone's got to have their own, you know, thoughts. Yeah. But yeah, see what happens. Oh, cool. Um, if you guys had to take one trade from now until September, what would that trade be? Can we say ones we're in? Because like I have conviction <laughs> yeah, on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could be ones that you're in if you but if you could only take if you could only be positioned in one, what would it one be? One coin, pop one cat. One coin. Pop cat, okay. Yeah. Pop kitty. What about you, Dark? Uh I'm gonna be boring and just say prime because I think by good September the staking should have launched, so it should be uh, good narrative. Explosive. I like prime, I've got a bit of prime. Got a bit of prime yeah. too. Yeah. It was nice when it was at thirty or almost thirty bucks. Oh, it was very nice. When I bought when my original buys were seven dollars, it looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Bro, the team the team are uh realizing their their profits, which is fair. Like they've built something yeah. pretty cool. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. They're, they're know fairly that. fairly keen on uh decentralizing the supply, I think, at the moment. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it <laughs> yeah i think i might do that one day if i'm ever like a uh a dev of a project no we're just decentralizing the supply we're not you know we're not selling because we want money yeah but there's there's rules on it in that new bill isn't there in the in america they're talking about like yeah one entity can't have more than 20 percent. so maybe it'll be a that's good cool. decision yeah mm. <laughs> I, I, I like how nancy pelosi was for the bill um, this week, pretty cool. She'll somehow find a way to make money out of it anyway. So absolutely, yeah. I hope she starts buying crypto. At least I can just copy trade her, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Swiss? Uh, um, listen, Stax was a twenty uh, percent oh. correction away from listening <laughs> to Simple Plan on repeat. Um, but uh. <laughs> If I had to pick one, um, someone's holding a gun at your head, and you gotta, you gotta get, the, you gotta make a good amount of money in a certain period of time. What would you pick? It might be a slow mover, but I think, uh, oh no, nah, hang on, let me, let me mid curve this properly. Let me find a good mid curve option. Um, can I say we can? Can I say we're gonna nuke in June and USD is my trade? Yeah. Or is this for the cycle? <laughs> I mean, you can say that. I hope it doesn't come true. Yeah. But... yeah is it for pretty... the cycle? Or is it for this? No, no, no. From uh, now until September, like September. For... Ah, uh, USD. I'm gonna say USD. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in USD. I'm overexposed, but. I'm just going to say USD for the lols. All right. Hope you're not right. <laughs> We're going to re re record those somewhere and come back in September when we do a pod then. And then uh, September's um, so long away, man. All right. Well, I'll just say DMT then. Yeah, DMT, nice. Uh, that's, what, that's more like it. That's I like more DMT. Like it. That's more like it. That's DMT a, after June. It's okay. had a significant Fair price enough. appreciation recently. What's it at now? It's fucking done One, really well. Oh, so good. Ooh. Very I believe well. it was like ten dollars at one stage for ages. I can't remember what it was at when we had Dark on last time. It wouldn't have been higher. Uh, let's just say that. I think I, I think I bought a bit around then because you guys were so bullish on it. it was maybe forty. Oh, Did okay, that that's still good though. Fuck, three forty dollar Reno's, four X yeah. almost. Yeah, fuck. I think it's done well because of that Binance thing, right? They said they were looking for um, projects that had like really well decentralized. Uh, supply stuff that have been overlooked, like big portion to the community. So DMT is 
possibly like on that list to get yeah. listings is that what they're after and uh, yeah. i think it was a combination of things i think like one was like exactly that two was the kobe article around the the mm -hmm. ifdv tokens and then like everyone was talking about dmt um so i just had a look at the date dark so when we were on with you last time it was 18 dollars 95 oh shit <laughs> so done it's done fairly well since that day um I, but, I just remember it being so bad, like as a performer, because everything was pumping and DMT was doing nothing, and then yeah. it just ripped. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and then and then I think Dgen happened, the L three, um, the base L three, yeah, even though it used the Arbitrum Orbit thing, and then yeah, it released its L three uh, in the last couple of weeks, and then it released the new game, uh, two days ago, or four days ago, five days ago, the Pets mm. game. Yeah, but even with... DGEN's not done as well as DMT. Um, I think the market cap's still higher, but the TVL on um, like the amount of money bridged across to Anchor is a lot higher. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also thought the Kobe... Um, uh, the Kobe substack was a good refresher of like things to look for um to invest in and i think when i read that as well i thought oh dmt is not the worst option then given where it's at what it offers and you know that it's like a community thing at such a low market cap yeah i still think it's got much higher upside to go um i think it's like a one thousand dollar token like the the tokenomics on the new game that they're done with like there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's coming out like there's a lot of like supply demand um stuff that's plays into it that I think will do well for the token of price appreciation. So like you've got to buy the NFT in order to be able to stake it. Um, and if you sell your NFT, like you can't actually touch your staking portion or get any of the gold that you get. And then like so the gold is like used to build houses and stuff like you would animal crop or that. So there's like a lot of these like dynamics that they've worked really well into the token and given that majority of the supply is unlocked then like the staking yields on the native token just for the native token portion is only like 20 percent but like the staking yield on the um the in-game token stuff is a little bit higher it's like than on like the gold but like um it's not like DeFi kingdom's level of high inflation where you can just like shove it in P five kingdoms play the game. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then there's the NFT side. Uh, too, so I think they've 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 built it in a way that's really good for token price appreciation. Plus, like the burns from using the the token on the L three and all of that. So I think it'll play yeah. well. And Block Rays, given he's like the the guy that made all of that money on Whiff and his second biggest bet is DMT and he's gained significant popularity from it. And then him now shilling that is probably helping too. So I wouldn't be surprised if it do well, but yeah, mm. obviously bag biased being on the platform as well. But uh, I do think it's one of the few projects that's got a, a decent buy distribution um, that is actually building some interesting products um, overall versus the other stuff out in the market. Like it's not just another uni swap. So yeah, I mean for me it's more so just like like it's ranked like five hundredth. Just wait until it like reaches the top hundred and then give it a serious look. I guess yeah. In terms yeah. of like selling, because what else are you gonna really buy? You know. Um, yeah, that's right. Like most people have made all their bets which is quite interesting because what else is there is like a potential narrative to come to light. Um, I think social fire is good. I was also about to say friend tech is my guess um, mm. alongside like DMT, but I think also I good like distribution, DMT right? a little bit better. Everyone, all of the influencers sold their tokens like on launch. Yeah. At the bottom. I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't know much about it. I think dark may have mentioned that there was a, something like that going on at launch, but um I don't know. I, I kind of like friend tech just for the fact that it was novel. Um, 
I mean, it's not the best user interface or anything like that, and that's, yeah, that's probably why shit. I picked DMT. Because <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, true. I've never done like this, any yeah. like, extreming or anything like that. So, like, DMT is pretty cool um, for that component of it. Um, but yeah, Frentech and DMT are not the worst ideas, I don't think, given the market cap size. What about yourself? Um, uh, we've had Dark, we've had you, Sticks. Have you told us what you were going to? Yeah, I hold? said Pop Cap. Okay, um, and what about you? Memes. Yeah, what about yourself, Wynal? Um, for me, oh, let me let me try and actually be creative here. Um, Take this. Or be brain dead. I'm just... Yeah, look, I feel if I had to pick one thing to hold um, for September, probably would have said DMT. I don't say DMT. I will probably say either Lido or Whiff. I think. That is a good one. Yeah. I think the I only think. My, my only concern with Lido is that even though the unlocks happened doesn't mean the sellings happened. Um, yeah. And it is the most horrendous chart in history in terms of Such like every time it's like tried to break out, it's just been sort of into. Can um, have... so, but I think the fact that it's got so much PTSD with so many of the previous traders that like it could warrant itself to, to do well. Um, and then with just from like my, my view on it is just like the mindshare perspective is that like the amount of hate that it gets like all of the time and like with any sort of meme coin pump, it's always c compared to like, if if Pepe does well, people shit on Whiff. If Doge does well, people shit on Whiff. Like, if anything does well, people automatically want to shit on Whiff. So, like, the fact that, like, it's sitting in everyone's head, like, sort of rent-free, um, and it's, like, consolidated at this sort of, like, $3 range for, like, such a long time, like, makes me believe that, like, it, it's due for a couple of legs up higher. Um, just from from a social narrative point of view um but that is would probably be my two picks if i like it would be one or the other um uh, what would make just, you think it was over for memes is it like when swiss buys or yeah 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. When, when swiss actually enters in size and not just like throws like like ten dollars into a meme then then yeah it's fucking over <laughs> you look, look at how these things so, sorry swiss gone I was just going to say, I'm never uh, buying memes. That's all. That's all I had to say. Uh, okay. So it literally is when exactly. Swiss buys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it literally is. Yeah, top. yeah. Because okay. if you look at how these things trade, like that chart is fucking insane. It's like a cobra. It's just range, enormous explosion, and then range. Yeah. So this thing, you're relying on a second leg on that. Yeah. Um, but I just Which struggle with my midwittery to see like where that comes from. Does it just come from a like a whoever's um, already here rotates back into it, or are we expecting yeah. normal uh, to turn up? No, it, mainly it, buyers gonna, that are already in. I think. Yeah, I think right. I think it I think it becomes like, like. Yeah, I think it's like someone uses it as a vehicle to attract people to the chain. That's 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 all I I think it comes from. Like, mm -hmm. um, you you kind of saw it with Bonk recently. And yeah. I've I've got a conspiracy theory with Bonk that a lot of people might not agree with me on, but um, a lot of people started messaging around the fact that Bonk's supply like, or unlocks were stopping uh, about a week ago, and I and then suddenly on the timeline, like I got like DMs about that, right, and then. Suddenly on the timeline, I started to see people do like bonk with pair trades or, you know, everyone was talking about bonk and it was like a lot of these high follower accounts. So my conspiracy theory is, is uh, the BD team of bonk because bonk's not a meme coin. It's a utility coin lapping as a meme coin um, because they've got bonk bot. They've got all these other like projects that they're like genuinely building. Uh, I think like the BD team, like someone on the marketing side was like, Hey, just letting you know, blah, blah, blah. And then that sort of like propagated into like the, the, the mind space of a lot of these, um, CT guys. Um, and then that 
drew a lot of trading attention to it. Um, and it seemed to sort of move in lockstep with, with Pepe, like when it started running too. Um, and like, uh, I think because of that, like the, like this marketing teams that are incentivized to try and build stuff out with these meme coins. So like, I wouldn't look at something like whiff and just think it's purely based on, um, the retail just suddenly showing up. I, I think it's, um, I think there's a marketing team behind it and I'm pretty sure that's, that's, that's well-known knowledge, but I think like the team behind it is got a fair bit of capital behind them. Um, they're incentivized to try and push the coin. Um, they will try and do whatever they can to, to try and get another bit of juice out of this thing before it runs. Um, and given like the rags to riches stories that has come out of it, I think that could attract a lot of retail um to buy in for like at this sort of price range because if like you know people made millions on it back at 30 cents and then it starts to break you know four dollars again people are going to be like oh i want to be here for 10 40 dollars whatever like the the narrative is then that's my sort of thesis on on, on that um w w will mm -hmm. it get to 40 dollars like who knows um i think that relies on the rest of like the majors going major legs higher. Um, but it, it's, it's like the best beta play. Um, because if you want to have a rags to riches story, then you want to be betting mm. on the, the the biggest outperformer. You don't want to be trying to chase the next one because you'll cut yourself yeah. off doing so. But that's my, uh, my thoughts on it. What do you reckon boys? Wrap it up in a minute. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, is there anything else we should talk about? Yeah, is there anything that I would that we missed in the last five or so minutes? R.I.P. Kabosu. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, very sad. It'll be funny if if Doge actually pops off this like next week because yeah, it didn't like... really uh, didn't really react too well. Um, I feel like I mean, long Doge longing on, a on dog the, that died. <laughs> It's a special place in hell reserved for you. <laughs> I saw that tweet. Like, people were saying, this is sickening. This is funny. But, yeah, rest in peace. Um, very fond memories. That was my second coin I ever bought, Doge. So that was, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty gassed. So nothing from me. Um, yeah, I'm all, I'm, I'm all out. You boys maybe, got anything? Maybe, maybe a bit of advice, Dark, for from a second cycler to some of our viewers. Um, you know, now that we're a bit further on in the cycle. Uh, I can give you some alpha around trading meme coins, which is ironic because I don't have any meme coin positions myself. But yeah, let's do it. Uh, there was I can't remember who it was, so I'm sorry to not be able to credit them with this but there was a guy out there on my timeline who was like if a meme coin drops by 50 percent, then you just buy it um and this was way before this was before everything this was like maybe i reckon october or november last year um so he'd been successful through like the mog uh sort of what was it mog pepe and uh, spx like all of those yep. going through summer and he's been right. Like I looked at, so I've done a few leverage trades on WIF um, and Pepe, and they've been like 50% down, wait for it to sort of consolidate a bit and then sort of leverage up and just catch the first pop. And it's been, it's been an incredible um, like success rate, I think. So you just look for stuff that has, you know, most of the narrative, um, wait for that 50% drawdown. And then in you go, and and it seems to work in my experience. Um, the other one is you can you can wait for like a big volume candle before your first buy, and this comes from doing a bit of a study into uh, you know like past meme coin cycles. Um, you spot there's always like a big volume day from basically nothing, and even if you bought the top of that daily candle, like you'd still be well in because they tend to do exactly what you're showing here which is once they run you can see it um like at the start of the march there's a that huge volume couple of days and then it just runs and runs and runs so 
that's the second bit. And the third bit is, is my own personal approach to it is just wait until nobody's talking about them. So mm. what I mm. what I think we're seeing, like the successful people this time who have done the threads of I bought with at you know zero and I've made two million off of it. They're the people that have seen this before. And mm-hmm. and so you just wait for something. Either like WIF was brand new, but with Pepe, you could have entered all of last year and and be massively, massively up. So you just wait until these things are boring. You've got Doge, you've got Pepe, you've got these things that you know are going to be persistent because they're like universal memes. And when nobody's talking about it, price is completely flat. Take whatever you can like live without, you know, whether it's 500 quid or 10K or whatever it is, just bang it in and completely forget about it. And then you just wait. And then the market will tell you when to exit because suddenly you wake up, it'll be all over your timeline. It'll be all over the news. And that's when you know this this thing has started. So those are three three ways of uh, approaching it. I like it. That's nice. Good. That's but good. I just, if you look all at right. the Pepe chart, you see that volume candle that you mentioned there. Like yeah, there you out go. Out of nowhere, if you bought the top of that, it did really fucking well. Yeah. Yeah, and then what you should see on that first drawdown, if you draw, um, like, there's probably a fifty percent drawdown from like mid March to mid April. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Bank yeah, a lot of was... a lot of the popular memes that have retraced fifty percent, which you're correct. Yeah, like it's about with 60... Pepe, Popcat. Fifty percent. Uh, yeah. Like if you just bought like brain dead play, if you just literally bought. Popcat, fifty percent down. You'd be up like twenty five, thirty percent just on that in like a day or two. So, like, yeah, like pretty brain dead play, but it works because a lot of people are greedy and they'll just keep buying it and then it'll retrace fifty percent. So yeah, no, that's, yeah. That's, it's still that's easier it. said than done. Like I say, I'm, yeah, uh, nah, yeah, a hundred percent. It's easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have nailed the bottom as well if I was smart enough. So, but yeah, I'm yeah. not. And probably last one to wrap it up, Sticks. Are, are you still having white monies and squishy chicken sandwiches? Stark wanted to know last time. <laughs> oh, fucking oath I am. Not as the squishy chicken sandwiches are more for special occasions because they, they're actually fried chicken. But um, yes, I, I do need to do need to consume more squishy chicken sandwiches. The last one I had was probably about a month ago. And I remember about a year ago, I was having like three a week. <laughs> so <laughs> I was smacking them. But um, I think, you know, if, towards the end of this year, if price is good, bull market vibes, I'll, I'll go back to consuming multiple a few times <laughs> a week, potentially, as a, as a, as a treat. <laughs> I was I was a bit worried for your health, um, but it sounds like <laughs> I believe you're like over seven foot, so it probably takes a lot to maintain. The, the <laughs> That's right. I'm I'm a pretty active dude, but yeah, <laughs> um, it, three was probably a lot during the week. <laughs> but yeah, nah, that were delicious. So I've got to go back. But yeah, nah, good pod boys. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thanks for for joining us, Dark. It was good to have you back on again. I, uh, I do hope for our bag's sake that uh, the cycle is a little bit longer than the end of the year, but uh, I, I uh, do think about that a lot. So um, you know, it, was, it was good to, to talk through some of these things. So I yeah, appreciate you all coming on. Um, thanks for our viewers for tuning in. I think we've got like 22 people in here right now. So thank you. Uh, Cheers, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe when we load this up on YouTube. Uh, we'll do some out. shorts as well. Our yep. uh, intern. Yeah, our intern's doing some sexy clips for, for the YouTube shorts, so please hit them up because that helps our channel to grow. Much appreciated. But yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, have a good night or, or day, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya.